Welcome everyone to beautiful British Columbia and Whistler Olympic Park, just a two hour drive from Vancouver on the Sea to Sky Highway. Hey everyone, it's the 2023 FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. I'm Steve Scholes, I've got Tim Wintanyu here. Today it's the under 23 10K individual start free technique races. We'll start off with the women. Now, Tim, we had the junior men and junior women race, the same race yesterday. What did we learn from that race? Well, Steve, we saw some of those athletes start off real strong, going for the win early, and they weren't able to hold pace. Yesterday was all about pacing, uh, maintaining and pushing through the entire course. Now, what about today? What are your thoughts on today's race for the U23 men and women? Well, they were calling for some snow, and so they've mixed up the start list a little bit, and we'll see uh, if that plays a plays a role in today's results uh, and if the snow actually does come. Yeah, good point. So let's go to Tom Steven talking to our Chief of Comp, Jake Weaver. Jake, with the new snow falling, I noticed that the jury has decided to change up the start order. Ta walk me through that. Well, uh, normally uh, the athletes are seated. That means they, uh, from past performances, they're ranked uh, from the slowest to the fastest. And in this type of interval start race, um, normally the fastest racers go at the end of the race. Um, last night we had uh, the possibility of uh, heavy snow in the forecast. And in that case, the last racers could be disadvantaged um, as the snow accumulates on the course. So we always want to have the best racers to have a fair chance of winning the race. So in that case, what we do is we uh, adjusted the order so that instead of the fastest racers going at the end, then uh, they're actually going in the middle of the race. So the, 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 the top two thirds of the field will be going in the, in, at the beginning of the race and then the lower ranked athletes go at the end. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Jake. So, Tim, any additional thoughts on the start list? Well, it's not snowing right now, so we'll see if that snow actually comes. And uh, if it doesn't snow, that's going to give a little bit of advantage to those late starters because they'll be able to get splits off the entire field. Yeah, it's interesting how you're, you know, there's the weather forecast and then the, the, the organization trying to adjust for that, always with the intention of helping, you know, the best athletes have a fair race, but it's always hard to predict weather just normally but let alone in the callahan valley here at whistler olympic park yeah that's true steve you know weather can go up and down and we're in the mountains things can come in and come out pretty quick so so tim take us through the five kilometer course that these athletes are going to ski twice yeah so this is the same course we saw yesterday that the junior skied so when they come underneath the bridge there's a long climb they've extended that climb from what we saw from the classic race you know and skiing the course yesterday talking to some of the athletes they do have a long downhill coming off the top of the course there but it's quite fast and not quite long enough to get recovery in and as soon as they finish that long straightaway they twist up and hit the second big climb of the day which takes us to about the 2.8k marker where we'll get a time check and then it's a roller coaster kind of descent back to the start area yeah, so this is an interval start to so these athletes one by one, and that creates a different test. You know, you know, we saw in the mass start a lot of very close races at the end because of the pack, but in this race, it's one skier at a time. But let's take a look back at the races from yesterday with the junior women. So here is Marina Kalen. She said, talking to her in the interview afterwards, that her legs were feeling really tired, and then she got this time splits. Yeah, and she, she just was one of those athletes who paced it so well, you know, finishing third on the day. Um, you know, talking to her after the race, she did feel like her classic race, she felt better. We were starting to see the fatigue in the athletes, a lot of racing, but a great result for her in third place. Yeah, and here's Bruce Van Jensen of Norway. She got a bronze medal last year, but this year she made it a silver in her favorite technique, skate technique, gaining on our winners. She was just six seconds back of this woman this is mga mila grossberg haugen andreasen already a world champion in the 20k mass start and today in the individual start she had to push on the descent it wasn't an easy victory but she took it by six seconds mga a junior world champion yeah it's so great to see her walk away with another gold medal you know she's been so dominant this season and just that smile says it all right there Steve. the trademark smile we're gonna see that i think a little bit more after this but there is your podium 
MGA, Brisbane Jensen, and Marina Kalin, the top three for the junior women here at Whistler Olympic Park. And now we're looking at our start list for our U23 women today. They'll be starting in about 10 minutes time. We've got the Estonian Ustulu kicking things off. And you can see these skiers, they are part of the top 25. So the first 25 skiers are the best 25 skiers. And then you see Lisa Lohmann, the German, and then the, uh, the American Sydney Palmer Ledger. And then Sophia Laukli and Marguerite yeah, so now we're into the starters here, later starters of the day. Again, if that snow does not come down, they are going to have the advantage of getting splits off the entire field. They are going to know where they are in the race um, from those splits that the coaches are giving them. Yeah, so they, they have to decide this basically last night, the starter. I mean, the athletes have to be ready and, and know what, where they're going to start. But so far, that snow is holding off. It's, uh, it's pretty nice here, but I saw the cameraman getting ready for some rain. So we're all getting anticipating something here but either way it's going to be an exciting battle out there 10k free technique individual start very much the start of the 2010 olympics where they started with the 10k start for the individual start for the women okay so we're just seeing some of our athletes here just getting ready getting their bibs getting yeah. their timing chips and you know steve we talk a lot about the start order and where you're placing and getting splits but you know at the end of the day it's still every athlete racing against the clock they're going to be pushing no matter where they start you know these athletes are focused they're trained on that whole mental aspect of it so you know we're building it up but i think some of these athletes who are going to be our top performers are going to be able to handle it no matter where they're positioned in that start order yeah they, they would have been in this situation before where the start order switches around and they've got to adjust to the situation. You know, yesterday we had, again, as Jake was pointing out, we had the faster skier start last, but they can adjust to this factor in these changes. And just like, yeah, they, Tom did that interview with Jake. You know, I just want to do a shout out to the Black Tusk Nordic Event Society. What an amazing job they have done here. You know, a couple years ago, they started planning for this championships. Uh, the, all those volunteers, we've had a few shots of the volunteers helping athletes get bibs and chips and just the, how positive and the amount of smiles that those volunteers have. So big shout out to the Black Tusk Nordic Event Society. As the athletes make their way to the start, we'll be right back here at Whistler Olympic Park. Coast Outdoors is Canada's premier cross-country ski store. We're proud sponsors of this year's World U23 Cross-Country Ski Championships at Whistler Olympic Park. We carry the best cross-country skis, boots, poles, clothing, and more. If you're serious about this sport, check out coastoutdoors.ca. Okay, we're back here at Whistler Olympic Park, waiting to see how the weather unfolds, but right now it is a beautiful day here at, in the Callahan Valley. Just a two hour drive up from Vancouver. This is day seven of competition. And so, so Tim, how much stress does this put on the wax techs? As someone that's been in the wax room on a day like this, what is the stress that that they would be experiencing right now? Yeah, it's it's nerve-wracking. You you're like trying to figure out: Do I wax for the current conditions? What you've been testing? You know, a lot of these wax techs have been out there since 7 a.m. trying to find the best wax for the current conditions. Uh, so, depending, do you try and make a call, anticipating on past experiences? and putting in a wax on for what you think's gonna happen, or do you just kind of trust the process, go with what you know, this is the fastest in our current state right now, this yeah. is what we're putting on, and if things change, then let's just hope uh, we have a competitive 12. ski. And you know, talking Hi, about, we, we put so much time and effort on the wax of things, it's still the athletes out there racing, and so we gotta make sure that, you know, as a wax tech, that uh, we're just making competitive skis that then the athletes can then do their job and win the race. Okay, we'll be right back. Right. 
Welcome back, everyone, to Whistler Olympic Park. It is day seven of competition of these U23 and Junior World Ski Championships for the Nordic competitions. It's the women's event to kick things off. Individual start, 10 kilometer free technique as we look out on beautiful Callahan Valley. So Tim, you know, interesting. We've been talking a lot about the weather and the conditions, but just, you know, as an athlete, just thinking through this process, getting ready for this kind of event, thinking about the conditions, what would you be telling an athlete in this situation? What should they be focusing on? What, what should they be, be looking at? Well, Steve, these athletes have been training for 11 months out of the year, right? So they're constantly adapting to weather conditions. We are an outdoor sport, so they're training in the summer, in the rain, in the cold, you know, all winter long. So they're used to having harsh conditions, being in those harsh, harsh conditions. And so really it's not trying to change anything, stick to what they know, you know, prepare the same way and control the controllables. And the weather is something you cannot control. Yeah, so today is not a harsh uh, harsh day, but we do potentially expect a, uh, a storm rolling in right now. It's above zero. It's very, very pleasant here at the start. But I think for these athletes, very shortly it won't become quite so pleasant as they push out on the course. And there's Greta Anderson with the US team. US looking for some great races today in both the women's and the men's races. Yeah, Stephen, going back to yesterday, you know, they had some great results. Jack Lang, 11. Um, yeah, on World Juniors. Sammy Smith, sixth place. So some strong racing from the juniors. So we'll see what these U23 athletes can do today for the US. And there is Kristen Fosnes. She was silver in the sprint and she was gold in the 20K mass start. She actually took uh, took a gold in the relay championships last year for U23, which is coming up tomorrow. So things could play out a little different for her. She was real strong in that classic race, but she was able to hang on to those leaders. You know, every time she lapped through, she wasn't sure she could do it, but it's because she had someone to ski with. Today, they are skiing on their own. It's every athlete against the clock. And that's Bib 17, Christian Bosnes, and then you see the top 25, or will be our first 25 starters, our top 25 in the FIS standings. We also see some Canadians, Jasmine Lyons, now with the University of New Hampshire, but she had some strong trials races leading yeah, up to and, this. And uh, again, we're talking about snow coming. If that snow does not come, there's definitely going to be some advantage for these later starters. They're going to know all the splits from everyone in front of them. Um, so there's that advantage to know if they need to push the pace, if they're on pace, uh, and those sorts of things. So who are some of the athletes you're looking for today? Just a few names that viewers should be watching for that we think could have some really strong results. But let's, right now, let's just take a quick look at the course. We'll come back to that, Tim. But the course is very interesting because it's it's somewhat different than the classic mass start. Yeah, Steve, here's the, here's the blue course. Same course that we uh, raced on yesterday for the junior categories. Uh, they come underneath the bridge and then there's a long climb. You know, they've extended that climb. So you get to the highest point of the course earlier on, about 1,200 meters into the race course. And then you come down a long downhill. Talking to the athletes, it's not quite long enough and it's a little too fast to get real good recovery. And then they start doing some twists and turns to the second biggest climb of the day, which takes us to the 2.8 checkpoint out there. And then it's uh, up over the top and some roller coaster twists and turns down to the stadium. Yeah, so it's definitely, we were talking to some of the Americans yesterday and they were saying, you know, it's, it's hard. You don't get much rest. You go three kilometers pretty hard and then you get the descent. So Tim, again, looking at some of the top names, just highlight a few names for our viewers. Well, bib number 25, you know, Bergana, she was so strong in that classic race, pushing the pace, pushing the pace. You know, I could see in the individual race now that she can push that pace and just race against the clock and not worry about people hanging on, catching a ride. So look for her, bib 25. Another one on my list is Lisa Lohman, bib 19. You know, she was 34th in the Tour de Ski, second in that classic race. She looked so comfortable in the classic race, so she could have a good one today as well. Okay, so those are some of the skiers to watch for, but it, it's gonna be interesting. You know, this is the first skate competition of these championships. And here we go, we're about to get underway very, very shortly. This is Ustulu of Estonia. She trains just about two hours east of Tallinn. 
Estonia. And Estonia has some great memories of those 2010 yeah. Vancouver Olympics with, with a silver medal in this very event. So Usterloo kicking things off here. This is the 10K individual start free technique. Usterloo heading out on the first of two laps of this five kilometer course. Three kilometers, lots of big climbs, then a long descent after that. And Steve, you know, we were watching the race yesterday from the junior categories. It was all about pacing out there. These athletes need to make sure they, they position themselves early on in the race, but are saving enough to continue to push for that second half of the race. So Estonia kicking things off here at Whistler Olympic Park for day seven. That is Ustilu. Okay, we've had, it looks like Hila Niemela on course, and this is Eve Andine Duchefort. She actually last year in the relay, which we have tomorrow, but the relay last year, she anchored the French team to a silver medal. So very strong skater, Duchefort. So the French team certainly motivated, you know, talking to some of the French coaches, they're very motivated by the results of the French team on the World Cup. Some great results with the French winning one of the World Cups just last week. And here from Italy, Sarah Hutter. She was fifth at the Italian National Senior Championships in the 10K skate. So this is her preferred technique. So Sarah Hutter now on course here. And our top 25 skiers by FIS rankings will be your first 25. If you're just joining us, we've been talking about the start order and just because of the weather and potentially inclement weather coming in later on, they've adjusted the start order and for the top 25. There's number five, Martina Decenta. You know, her father raced here in 2010 at the Olympics. And also her, ne her aunt, Man Manuela Decenta, had a long, uh, great career racing for Italy. And she was, just talking about Martina, she was 32nd at the Tour de Ski. Just uh, just ended a few weeks ago, so uh, a World Cup skier, Martina Decenta, heading out for 10 kilometers. So one, you know, we talk a lot about these U23 athletes being on the World Cup, skiing on the Tour de Ski. It's really going to play a role of how well they've recovered. You know, the Tour de Ski, grueling seven stages of racing. It's in Europe, then they have to fly over here, deal with the jet lag think about recovering and then peaking for these championships. So that this is Rita of Finland. She was sixth at the National Finnish Championships, Senior Championships and 10K skate. So again, another skier, very strong in skate. Now here is the, the Swede Louise Lindstrom in the 2021 World U23 Championships in Vukati, Finland. She was second in the 10K skate. She hasn't had great results this year, but this is definitely a technique and a race that she excels at. Again, 2021 silver medal in this category at the World yeah, U23 Steve, Champions. so she has some confidence from past experience. If everything just aligns for her, look for her, she could have a good race today. And here is Novakova of Czechia. She was 25th on the mass start race just a few days ago. They got a little bit extra rest. So three days ago, they had the 20K mass start. Now today, the 10K individual start, skate technique. So eight skiers on course. We've got 51 skiers, 18 nations here. The FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. Now the German, the first German, Germana Tanheimer. She won a bronze in the World Junior Championships in the relay last year. And she's part, this is interesting, she's part of the Zoll team and just a little bit of information. Uh, that's the, uh, the German border police, effectively. That's the loose translation, but they have a, a long history of a sports team and she is part of that. And there's Bib 10 Kahara, Steve, our sprint champion from earlier this week. You know, she races on the World Cup. She's an Olympian. If she could have a solid one today. Okay, so Yasmin Carrera on course now for Finland, the sprint champion. And just to note, uh, number two, Ila Niemela was a non-starter here. So number two, Niemela not on course, but this is Carrera, 
sprint winner, winner. She and she dominated those sprints. Yeah, it, she definitely showed her fitness out there. She led every single heat. She was the fastest qualifier. And she did not do the classic race, the mass start. So she's well rested for this. So I think that could be a surprise here. Number 10, Kehera. We'll see how she does. This is PRL. First year U23. Last year she was 22nd at the World Junior Championships in the 15K skate. So another skier that per, per, prefers this technique. Yeah, Stephen, some of those athletes are going to pick and choose their races where they're stronger at and try and save as much energy um, in, in a championship week like this to have the best results. So one reason why Kahara did not race that classic mass start. So here's Nora Sanis, uh, another strong skater. She was seventh at the Norwegian National Championships in the skate technique. Also, just a week ago, a week and a half ago, she was part of the club team that won the Norwegian Relay Championships uh, with uh, with Fosnes. And not only is she having some strong results this year, she's also a med student in Norway. Wow, okay, that's pretty pretty intense. And now we have uh, Maciusz of Poland. And if we go back, uh, she won the gold in the U23 Skate 10K. I believe that was in 2021. So again, another skier that prefers this technique. Yeah, Stephen, she raced at the Canadian trial races in Prince George. She was looking really strong. Um, yeah, so if everything again lines up for her, she could have a really strong result podium place. Now we have the Kasich U twins. They're starting uh, one after the other. This is Kaidi Kasich U. There we go. Good to have that on the screen because uh, it's hard to tell them apart. She was uh, she competed at the Olympics. Both. Both twin sisters competed at the Olympics, and uh, she was 15th in the classic uh, mass start race. And here is Katie Kasichu, the second of the Kasichu twins from Estonia. She was 11th in the mass start classic race here just a few days ago. So, Heidi and Katie are now on course. And we are very happy that they have their bibs on so we can tell them apart because they, when you see them standing next, next to each other, it's very hard. And here is Mork. Emma Kirkberg Mork, number 16. Strong distance skier from Drammen area. You know, they have always those Drammen city sprints in Norway. So I'm sure as when she was young, she was sitting on the sidelines watching those races, inspiring her to be racing here today. And actually, uh, her brother is racing in the for the U23 men. Okay, here's Fosnes, a gold and a silver so far, these championships. Someone to watch for, is she tired from that race? But as Tim mentioned earlier, when she won gold, that was mass start, she hung on to Bergana. And she said she needed some superpowers to somehow hang on. Yeah, so this is a different race. And maybe she's got those superpowers today. Definitely a start like that, she looked real strong. And here we go, bib number 18, Sydney Palmer Ledger. Talking to her, she, she mountain bike raced when she was younger and she actually raced here in Whistler uh, a bunch of years ago. So she, she knows the Whistler area both in the summer and the winter now. Strong result, eighth in that mass start. You know, she got selected to go to the Tour de Ski earlier this year with the Americans. She turned it down. She wanted to focus on these championships, peak for them. So she, in that classic race, she looked ready to perform here. Okay, here's the silver medalist from the classic mass start, the Terminator, Lisa Lohman, showed no emotion, no weakness during that race, and she got a silver in the mass start race just a few days ago. Definitely someone to watch here. She actually in the junior, um, yeah, she's second in the classic race, and she was 34th in the Tour de Ski just uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, Stephen, with the result from that mass start, it looks like she's recovered from the Tour de Ski racing, not dealing with the jet lag. And here is Helen Hoffman. She was junior world champion in the 15K free technique race last year. Now she's a first year U23. Definitely someone to watch here, a very strong skate skier.
Yeah, Stephen, she was world junior champion last year. Sometimes it's a big step moving up into this U23 category. So we'll look at those time splits throughout the day to see where she ranks up against the U23 athletes. Here's Anya Wieber of Switzerland. Gold at the Swiss National Championships in the skate technique. Also on the Swiss National Time Trial team. And she was fourth in that Mass Star Classic race a few days ago. Hungry, very hungry for a medal here today. Here's Novi McCabe, Olympian. She got a great result in the uh, 30K skate at the Olympics, 18th at the Olympics in Beijing last year. She was 14th in the mass start. She's also an NCAA champion in the classic technique from last year. She skis for University of Utah amongst all the other races that she does. And Steve, I'm just looking at the first time split at 2.8 kilometers. We got some of our first athletes coming through there and it's Martina Decenta sitting in first place. Actually, just the Lu Louise Lindstrom came through and they're actually tied. Um. So here's Nadia Kalin. Her sister won a bronze yesterday. Definitely gonna be inspired by that. She had a st very strong result in the classic mass start race. Nadia Kalin on course here. And here is number 24, Sophia Laukley. Yeah, Sophia Laukley, she came off that final stage of the Tour de Ski, the big climb, third in that race. You know, podium on the World Cup, definitely showing how strong of a skater she is. If she's fully recovered, she's definitely one of my favorites today to be on the podium. Yeah, and she's also with the University of Utah. She was an NCAA champion last year in the 10, 10K skate, I believe, or the Mass Start skate. So very strong skate skier. And we talked to her. She was definitely, she was feeling some illness after the Tour de Ski. And now we've got Bergana. Third place in the classic mass start race. She led for 19K, but she wasn't able to drop two skiers and she ended up bronze medal, eighth on the final climb in the Tour de Ski. Yeah, Stephen, she was just so strong in that classic race, constantly pushing the pace, you know, and just two other skiers were able to get some superpowers and hang on to her. So. Today, when she's racing out there by herself, look for her to be pushing that pace and leading those time splits. Here is Mua Hansen from Sweden. She was the world champion last year in the skate sprint for U23. Talking to her yesterday, she said she had COVID, a really bad situation with COVID in the fall, and she's been gradually recovering. She hasn't had very much racing, but she still got fourth in the classic sprint. So someone to watch for here. So Mo Hansen of Sweden now on course, our 26th starter. So our top 25 have started. And here we have Norris Sanis. Oh, and look at this, Marchish. I think she's gaining. These are 32nd interval starts. So Marchish coming up this climb. Yeah, Stephen, so even though there's 30 second starts between these athletes, you know, there's some of these long climbs and they can start to see if they're gaining time on the person in front of them. And that starts to put into perspective how their pacing's going, where they're ranking in that race. And so, yeah, Isabel, bib number 13 there, sitting in first place at 2.8K. So Marchish, who won gold in the World 23 10K skate, a couple years ago, looking strong so far. And we've had 13 skiers come through that checkpoint. So we're gonna see our top FIS rank, 25 rank skiers through that time check. And there's the Lillian next. Gagnon starting <laughs> off, you know, definitely a strong race in that classic race for a Canadian 12th place. Um, yeah, she was on the World Cup this year. She's an up and comer first year in the U23 category. So look for her in the next couple of years out on the Canadian race scene. And here is Moa Hansen, the Swede. Gold medal last year at the World U23 Championships, but recovering from COVID. And she, I was talking to her yesterday and she is just happy. She loves being here at Whistler Olympic Park. She, I said, you know, there might be a snowfall, there might be rain. She said, it, it doesn't matter. It'll still be beautiful here at Whistler Olympic Park. So great, great.
Great talking to Moa. And just building on that, you know, talking with one of the TDs too, a lot of these European countries are, are not having a good snow year. And so for these Europeans to be racing here at Whistler in this natural snow, it's just, it's amazing. And here is Mork of Norway, our 16th starter. Again, the top 25 FIS ranked skiers are our first 25 starters. She's coming up to that time check shortly. And she's moved into third place there, Steve. Okay, so now Fosnes, our gold medalist from the classic mass start race. She's getting close to that time check, our 17th starter. Machish holding the top spot right now. Machish still in first, but Fosnes a second down here. This is the 2.8 kilometer point. Near the top of the course, Tim, but there's still a few hundred meters after this. Yeah, and they'll come around the corner and it flattens out a little bit, and that's an important part of this race is to be able to push over that gradual climb. A lot of time can be made up there. You know, it's still early in the race, 2.8K. We saw yesterday some of those athletes leading at 2.8K and then falling off. They've gone out too hard, and we'll definitely see at the other checkpoints who's on pace to, for a podium. Here's Federica Casol of the Italian team starting out. Two laps of five kilometers, 10K individual start race here at Whistler Olympic Park. U23 women, our men coming after this. And here is the Terminator, Lisa Lohman, second in the mass start race, still not showing any emotion, coming up to this checkpoint. Again, she's skiing just like she skied that classic race. So composed, just focused on this race, and she is our new leader at 2.8K. By 0.1 of a second, the Terminator looking for a medal here. Again, showing very little emotion. But look at this, Helen Hoffman, a world junior champion in skating, coming up here for Germany. It's gonna be oh so close, six seconds. Helen Hoffman up now, wow, our new leader. what a lead. I was not expecting for someone to be that far ahead, 2.8 kilometers in. And she is a first year U23. And this is at 2.8 kilometers near the top of the course. There's still a couple hundred meters after that point. And then they've got about a kilometer and a half descent. And Steve, you can just hear some of the coaches yelling on the sidelines there. Uh, they're giving splits to the athletes, giving them updates where they are in the race. It will help them with their pacing if they need to push a little more, if they can kind of think a slightly on recovery and then push on another part of the course. Now we see some skiers lapping through on their second lap, some on their first lap. So you can see one in five on their first lap, 32 just starting the first lap for her. That's 32 from Japan, Honda starting her first lap mixed in with some athletes skiing their second lap. And here is Helen Hoffman, our leader at 2.8 kilometers. She's just coming to the top of the course. And then she's gonna start descending down. You know, it's a fun descent. We skied it yesterday. I was talking with Gus Schumacher. He, he loves that descent, the twists and turns. His only thought was, hopefully he's got enough in his legs to fully enjoy that descent. So Helen Hoffman leading at 2.8 kilometers. The junior world champion in skate technique last year in Norway. And there you can see Isabella Meshi, bib 13. She's already reeled in bib 12. Uh, that's so we know that's a 30 second time gap. She's pretty much made up there. Now Machish was sitting third at that top of the course at 2,800 meters. Now, one skier we're watching also is Bergana of Norway. She'll be coming up shortly to that time check. So we've got a few more skiers of our top 25 ranked skiers coming through that time check. But here is Machish. Yeah, and she's got the lead there halfway through, you know, 16 seconds lead. That's a great race for her. She can keep up that pace. She's Beautiful on track skiing. for, yeah. Beautiful skiing. Really taking advantage of the glide and that flat stadium area. Now here's Bergana of Norway, the classic mass start bronze medalist, 19 kilometers she led, but just overtaken by two other skiers. And here we go at the 2.8 kilometer checkpoint. She is, she was she, up. She's our new leader. And look at her. I feel like she's she's got more in her. Look, judging from that facial expression that we saw in that classic race, I think she's saving a little bit to push even harder on that second lap, Steve. 
So just looking there, you can see our top six. Just out of the top six, Sophia Laukley came through that checkpoint, 10 seconds down. Another skier we're watching there for the Americans. And there is Laukley catching the person that started right, 30 so seconds ahead of her. So she's made up 30 seconds already on Nadia Kalin. So great race for Laukley. Again, she didn't finish the classic race. I would suspect that she was saving everything for this skate race. Yeah, you can hear them calling out the splits, Tim. And there's Brigana now. She's got Laukley in front of her. And she, from time to time, will be able to see her. And it looks like Laukley, Laukley just 10 seconds behind her time-wise, she's a good target for, for uh, Bergana in first place. Exactly, Steve. And that's an advantage of starting later, is that you can see those up, your competitors in front of you, as well as getting those time splits off of them. Okay, so there is Fosnys. She's coming into that lap lane. She'll be at the halfway point of her race, and she is down on Maciej from Poland. So Maciej having a strong race. Yeah, 9.8 seconds back. You know, that's, that's a lot of time to try and make back on this second lap uh, of this course, especially with how well Isabel was skiing. She was looking still so smooth. It looked like she had lots of energy, so I don't think Fosnes is, is in it. So here's the Terminator, Lohman. She was sitting third, tied for third at the 2.8 kilometer checkpoint. And Steve, you can see Lisa Lohman there past Bib 18, Sydney Palmer Ledger. She's made up 30 seconds on her, but for Sydney now, she can actually just sit in behind and ski the second lap. And sometimes, you know, that's all an athlete needs is someone else to ski with. And so for Sydney to just stick with Lisa on the second lap, she could end up with a pretty good result today. Okay, so Lohman is in first place at five kilometers, but very close to Marchish, just as she was at the 2.8 kilometer checkpoint. Now here is Helen Hoffman. She was sitting second, but just very close, less than a second behind our leader at 2.8 kilometers, Bergana. So Hoffman, the junior world champion in the skate technique, Leading right now at five kilometers. The German looking to match her performance last year from the Junior World Championships, but now in the U23 World Championships here at Whistler Olympic Park. Looking fresh, looking comfortable, just getting a little bit of a rest on this small descent out of the stadium. Now the climbing starts. Almost so, three kilometers are climbing to the top so of the So Steve, course. just comparing those splits when we look at the 5K and the 2.8, you know, Helen Hoffman had seven seconds over top of Lisa Lohman at 2.8K, and now it's only down to four. So that's where the pacing comes in. Has Lisa Lohman paced it a little bit better than Helen Hoffman? Did Hoffman go out too strong off the start? And there's Helen Hoffman starting her second lap here. Two times five kilometers. And there was Amelia Wells just going, skiing through your screen. And this is Nadia Kalin. Her sister took a bronze yesterday. And we've got a couple skiers coming on their second lap to the top of the course, the top of the second climb. Yeah, I believe that skier just coming into the screen there, middle of the screen there is Decenta, who is currently sitting in first place at 7.8 kilometers. And there's a BC resident, Marielle Ackerman from Kimberley, BC, just about to start. Again, their time starts when the athlete breaks that wand. And Marielle with University of Vermont also. And here is Laukley. Laukley was just down at the 2.8 kilometer checkpoint by 10 seconds from Bergana and Hoffman. So see if she's gained a little bit of time or lost a little bit of time from the top of the course. So she is 8.8 .8 seconds she's, down. She's made up two seconds on that last 2K. You know that tempo that she's skiing through the stadium, she's still looking strong. I think she's got a lot left to uh, put out there for the second lap. And this is looking very interesting. Bergana, who was 
just slightly ahead of Hoffman at 2.8 kilometers is now 0.6 second down so it's it's very close within a second at 2.8 kilometers within a second at five kilometers now she's starting to grit her teeth yeah and it's all going to come down to these next two climbs will she be able to keep pushing that pace up those climbs and pull ahead of Hoffman or is Hoffman just the stronger skier today So at five kilometers, Hoffman in the lead, just 0.6 of a second up in Brigana. Lohmann, the German, in third, but very close to Marcisch of Poland. And Laukli, eight seconds back. This is gonna be an interesting final lap. It's basically three kilometers of climbing. There's a few short rests, but not a lot of rest. And if you haven't saved enough, this is where it really starts to hurt. And even if you're pushing hard, you're pretty much almost almost like Tim, the finish line is at the eight kilometer point. You've got to push to, hard to the top of that second yeah, climb. Yeah, if you're trying to save anything on that second climb, you know, other athletes are going to be eating up time, pushing up over the top at the eight kilometer mark. Um, and, you know, talking to some of these athletes, they come through the stadium and they lap through. It's about four or five minutes of sustained climbing coming out of that stadium area. So. Yeah, a lot can happen. Fatigue can set in. There's Jasmine Lyons for Canada, VIP 37, coming through your screen. A couple other skiers to mention. 21, Anya Weber, 11 seconds out at five kilometers. Christian Fosnes, 14 seconds out. And Louise Lindstrom, 21 seconds out. So still a number of names in the mix here for medals. And again, their BIP 34 was just starting first lap, BIP 1 out on their second lap. Okay, here is Marchish at 7.8 kilometers. She was sitting third, tied for third at five kilometers. The Polish skier who won a world championship in this event two years ago on some good form. She's currently in first place. She is looking so strong, Steve. She's really pushing up this climb. Yeah, she's looking good. Has, is she the one that saved the most energy for this final time? She's got a couple hundred meters to the top of this course, the top of the second big climb, then the descent. This is where it really counts. Wow, so number 12 is Nora Santa, so Marchish has made up quite a bit of time and passed the person that started in front of her. There is Kahera of Finland. She was our sprint champion, and it almost looks like maybe a little bit of snow coming and down. Look, here's Machis, BIP 13, almost a minute and a half up on Kahara Mar already. Marchish having a great race here. We talked about the great Justina Kavalchuk and her great results here on these Olympic trails back in 2010. She would be. Wa she would have watched those Olympics. And she just, just look at the power of her one skate, Steve. You know, for the Americans, that's V2 as she's cresting the top of the course up this gradual climb. She is looking so strong, and she's definitely putting a lot of speed in coming into this descent. No sign of weakness there as she pushes right over the top of the big climb. This is Katie Kasikiu of Estonia. Coming up, this is this image you're seeing on your screen is the top of the second big climb. And she's moved into second place, 33 seconds off what Isabella is skiing out there. And this, so the number is, it says 72, but this is our 20 seconds, or sorry, our 40 second, 40 second starter, starter. Thank you. For the day. They, they, they lost bib 42 out there, and so bib 72 is actually skiing in the 42nd spot. <laughs> okay, so here is Mork of Norway. She's sitting third right now. Just moving down the standings. Just behind her is Kub Kubeliusz of Poland. But Mork falling off the pace. She is in fifth right now. And here is Fosnys coming up to the time check. She is behind Marcisch. Look at that pace that Isabel has set out. You know, at, at 2.8 kilometers, Marcisch and Fosnys were almost tied, and now it's a much more significant margin. 35 seconds, so Marcisch has saved something for the second half of this race. But again, 
Lisa Lohman just coming into your screen. And as I said earlier, Sydney Palmer's still right on the tails of her skis. So again, Sydney's 30 seconds off Lisa Lohman, but a way to hang on there. Let's see where Lisa Lohman is at this 7.8 time check. So at five kilometers, Lohman and Marchish were tied. Now Lohman down 10 seconds on Marchish. That is a lot of time to make up over her about two and a bit kilometers. She's really got to push over the climb and really push on the descents. But Palmer Ledger getting a good ride there. And here is Helen Hoffman. Hoffman is down to three seconds on Marchish. And she, Steve, she actually looks like she's fading a bit on this climb. Doesn't look as strong as she did on that first lap when she lapped through the stadium. Hoffman was in first at five kilometers. Four seconds up on Marchish. Now she is three seconds down. The polar skier, Isabella Marchish out front right now, but we're waiting for Bergana, and waiting for Laukley. Yeah, there's still still two skiers out there who can who can knock Meshish off that first place spot. And Hoffman now looking, sorry, Lohman there, number 19, looking really good here. She's sitting third, 10 seconds back of Marchish, but we've, caught, we've got a couple more top skiers to come through that timing point near the top of the second big climb. And you can just see Hoffman there, not quite as composed as what Lisa Lohman was. You know, it definitely she might have gone out too hard on that first lap. And it looks like she's fading just a bit. Another thing about Marchish, a year and a half ago, a really bad roller skiing accident. She was hospitalized. It took a while for her to go through re re rehabilitation, come back from that. Very tough fall. But uh, she went to the Beijing Olympics. But now she's on great form here, leading this race. And there is Marchish. She's in the stadium. Look how strong she still is. You know, coming around 10, almost finishing the 10K course and skiing so, so strong. Yeah, look at this beautiful technique. She knows she's going for a medal and it might be the color gold as she drives to the finish. Marchish of Poland, inspired and coached by the great Justina Kowalczuk is going for a great time here. Oh my goodness, Marcisha Poland. We still have more skiers to come through, but this might be a gold medal performance. That is going to be the time to beat Steve. She's going to move into that hot seat position, and we'll see if she stays, in, stays there. Oh my, leaving it all out in the course. Now Bergana coming to the checkpoint. This is going to be close, Tim. This is going to be close. Bergana was four seconds up on Machish at five kilometers. What is it now? As the seconds tick down, oh, she's got 2.7 seconds up. Oh, this is close. And we saw in that junior race, you know, on that descent, six seconds were eaten up pretty fast. So two seconds, is, does she have enough to, to maintain that lead? Is she gonna push on those downhills? There's a lot that can happen yet. And you saw in those time splits, Laukley has moved up to fourth, seven seconds out of third and ahead of Lohman. So at 7.8 kilometers, it was Bergana, Machish by two seconds, Hoffman by five, Laukley by 12. Lohman by 13. So I think you've got it down to five skiers in the hunt for medals. But who knows what colors those are going to be as we see Kasiku of Estonia pushing to the end of her race. Kasiku looking for a top. I think a top 10 is definitely within her grasp here. Number 14 here at the Again, finish line. If you're just joining us, the top 25 skiers by FIS ranking were our first 25 starters. Kasiku going to come in in second spot right now so far. With an excellent second best time for Katie Kasiku from Estonia. And there is our hot seat, Machisha Poland. Yeah, will she remain in that hot seat and step on that top step of the podium? Or is Bergana gonna nudge her out? What is Bergana gonna do? That descent, that, that top part of the climb in the descent. Machish very happy to be in the hot seat, but what, what medal will she get? And here's Fosnes, our gold medalist from the 20K skate. I don't think she's gonna get a medal. 
to Fosnes. Gold in the 20K mass start, silver in the sprint. Looking for about a top 10 position here today. So Fosnes, a great championship so far. She'll be a factor in the mixed relay, I'm sure, coming tomorrow. Norway with a strong team, and I'm almost certain she would be part of that after her performances. And here is the Terminator. This is Lohman. She's in range for a medal, I believe. Lohman now down on Marchish. They were tied at five kilometers. Lohman. These seconds count. It could mean a medal or not. Led Palmer Ledger coming across the line for the U.S. And there is Lohman. Sitting in second place. But a great race by Sydney Palmer Ledger there to able, be able to hang on that whole second lap. And here's Helen Hoffman. So Lohman now second She's our new leader. Wow, Hoffman has moved ahead of Marchish. She must have had a real strong descent there coming down the last 2K into the stadium. And she is going to be moving into that hot seat. And that may be enough for a world championship. It certainly should be enough for a medal. The junior world champion from last year, now in the U23 category, could she make it a world championship? Championship here. This is Nadja, sorry, Anja Weber coming in for Switzerland. So just and Steve, just looking back at the splits, you know, Helen Hoffman was three seconds down on Is Isabella at the 7.8k mark, and then she comes out ahead. Uh, of Isabella by a second. So she definitely made up time on the last couple kilometers. You know, again, coaches are out on the course yelling splits, yelling words of encouragement, really pushing those athletes on. And that's the benefit of Bish being a, a, a little bit later starter than Marchi. She's getting those time splits, and that may have been all the difference in the world. Literally, as Helen Hoffman of Germany gets comfortable in the hot seat, but Bergana, our 25th starter, could perhaps unseat her. Yeah, Steve, it's really only Sophia Luckley, who was seven seconds off, 7.8 kilometers, or Bergana that could bump her off that hot seat. And I think it could be very close as Bergana descends into the stadium. How she tackles this final 300 meters could decide whether she is a world champion or a silver medalist. That's gonna be really, really close, Tim. 30 seconds through the stadium. Oh my goodness, Bergana. 28 seconds. It's gonna be super close. When we see them come around this corner, it's about 15 seconds to the finish. Bergana of Norway. This is for a potential world championship. We've got more starters to finish. The seconds counting down. Bergana, three, two, one. It's not quite enough. Hoffman is gonna be your likely top finisher. Bergana in that silver medal position. Lohman in third. Bergana moved to third. And it's Isabel Metchish who's in the silver medal position there, Steve. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So she lost time on the last two kilometers of that course. She looks tired. Wow, that is what individual racing is all about. People moving up, down, all around, out there, fighting for those spots. Completely exhausted. Now, we have more starters to finish, but we had our top 25 start first. Hoffman. Junior world champion last year in skate and looking at a U23 world championship here at Whistler Olympic Park as Helen Hoffman gets the hugs from the coaches. Steve, just how she looked on that last climb, I didn't think she had enough in her to pull off the win, but she did. Bergana happy to take a medal. There's Sophia Laukley right in the mix. Yeah, fifth place for Laukley. And again, 
These are all unofficial placing. There's still more racers out there. There's Novi McCabe, one of the Americans. Congratulating Bergana on a medal. Helen Hoffman, this is interesting. Helen Hoffman, her birthday is February 7th. So she is going to be turning 21 in a few days, an early birthday present for Helen Hoffman. Yeah, 21. I, I can't remember what I was doing for my 21st birthday, but I'm sure Helen Hoffman will remember this. There we've got Moa Hansen coming in, the world U23 champion in skate last year in the, in the sprint. Weather expected and also the snow condition. Recovering from COVID. Happy to be racing at Whistler Olympic Park. Can you see the sun has come out? The weather didn't deteriorate yet as we may have expected. Many of the good skiers started in the middle of the pack, so among them we had Hoffman, Loman, Nevad, McCabe. So there is Hoffman in the leader's chair. And she's going to be there for a while. We've got many more finishers to come in. But the top 25 FIS ranked skiers started early because there was concern about rain or snow or heavy snow coming in. But look at that blue sky in the background there, Steve. So I don't know if the snow is going to be a factor even in the men's race later today. And there is Marcic of Poland. She's she, got to be happy with that, Steve. She looks so well out there. She skied so strong. And in an individual race, it's all about feeling. And she's going to walk away feeling great with how she skied. And then to add to that, a silver medal. So one thing was clear is the descent was very important because Marchish was up on Hoffman going into that, that final 2K. And then Hoffman was able to gain just enough time. Yeah, and we didn't have any cameras on that part of the course, so was it ski speed? Was it how they skied the flats uh, on that back section? It's all questions we don't have answers to. Okay, so here is the fight of Germany. And Lillian Gagnon from Canada, bib number 29 there. Again, look. Again, 30-second inter interval start, so she's made up time. So uh, we've got joining us in the uh, the commentary booth, Luke Jager of the U.S. team. And uh, Luke has been skiing this course. He, he, he didn't race today. And uh, we got Luke here in the middle, Tim uh, on the side. Yeah, so Luke, great to have you in the booth here. And uh, just to want to get your comments here, obviously the descent was uh, really important yeah, here. Wow, a little more introduction to Luke. He's two-time gold medalist from the American Relay team in 2019 and 2020 at World Junior Champs. So and a, and he's a got, Beijing Olympian as yeah, well. Yeah, so he's got some experience racing these World Junior Championships, Steve. So anyways, Luke, your thoughts on this course and uh, how people skied it. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I'm honored to be in such esteemed company uh, <laughs> in the broadcasting world. But um, no, yeah, I mean, it was a barn burner of a race, that's for sure. So interesting with this course, you know, an Olympic quality course like this, it's got such long and grinding climbs, but also the descents are so important, like you talked about. And I mean, so many different strengths of these different skiers here. And, you know, some people are gonna really need to make all their time in the um, in the climbs. And I was watching like Bergan, for example, I think the way she skis is, you know, it's a very like aerobic grindy type of skiing. So she knew she was gonna have to go really hard in, in the uh, in the climbs, but then some of the others, like maybe Lisa Lohman or Kristen Fosnes, is who I was wondering about as well. I think have a little more of that kind of like sprint physiology and can really maybe have to hold back a little more in the climbs and are going to have to make more of their uh, time in the transitions and and in the, the descents. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we saw it's so easy if you kind of blow all your matches on the climbs to just um, you know lose time and move a little bit backwards on the downhill. So. It's really a fine line, and it really kind of depends where your strengths lie. Now, when you're in a race like this, and you get splits where they're saying, hey, you're one second down, or you're one second up, like, and you're right at your absolute maximum, what are you trying to process? What are you thinking about? Like, what, you know, how would uh, Hoffman be thinking when she's told, hey, you're a couple seconds down on Marchish going into that descent. What's going through an athlete's mind in that situation? Typically? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. You know, it depends a lot on sort of um, what's unfolding in your mind uh, before getting that split because you have a pretty good sense of how close you are to your limit a lot of the time. And, um, you know, for myself personally, it's like, 
one second can feel um, like a lot longer than one second sometimes if that's how far you are because you have a pretty good sense for how your trajectory is and um, you know these are all such you know high level athletes that are so good at um, the nuances of pacing and balancing their effort that um, you know I think some of them probably would get a split like that and know that that's something they can make up but it really kind of depends on uh, the story that's happening within your muscles and the lactic acid. Okay, so here's bib number 37, Jasmine Lyons. What a great race for the Canadian. Yeah, Coming she's in. looking at a top 15, I think, for Jasmine Lyons. It's gonna yeah. be close as she drives to the finish, the University of New Hampshire athlete. So Luke, question for you here. These championships are in North America and Canada. You know, there's sometimes a lot of pressure for these hometown athletes, home turf, so to speak, for North America. How do these athletes deal with that sort of pressure? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Um, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Just it depends a little bit uh, sort of what your season looks like, what your experience looks like. And, you know, some of these older U23 athletes, especially, um, you know, like Sophia Lautley, for example, Novi McCabe, is Marchic, a lot of these have experience at the World Championships, the Olympic Games. So they probably have a lot of experience sort of mitigating that pressure and, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, there's sort of only so much focus you can put into one season. And, you know, for a lot of these athletes on the U23 category, especially world championships in Planitza is what's next for them. And, you know, this is almost a little bit of like a little bonus or a warm up for that. And a lot of their seasons and their training will probably have been tailored around performing really well at the world championships. But that being said, U23 world championship is a pretty big deal. And having that as, you know, under your belt is is pretty, pretty good. You join pretty esteemed company if you are able to do it. So. Yeah, I don't know, it's a balance. It depends a lot who you are. And some of these other countries, like the Norwegians, maybe you know, aren't gonna get a shot at the World Championship because it's so competitive uh, at the senior level in their country. So for Fosnes and Bergen and some of the others, their entire season will be built around this. Now we've got just Ra uh, Rakashiva of Kazakhstan finishing up. Now Helen Hoffman, uh, our leader right now, she was six in the mass start race. Um, how does an athlete recover? from day to day, like what would they be going through? That was three days ago, a really hard 20K race. She was right in the mix to late in the race. How, how does someone like yourself recover from say a 20K race and then going to a 10K race? What would, what would the process be? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, most of these teams will have physios here and I'm sure they'll be utilizing that a lot. And the most important thing is just making sure you're eating a lot immediately after the race, getting good fuel. But sort of the reality is when you're in good shape, there's not a lot you can do to derail that. So. You know, these athletes um, who are skiing well all week that you see, they have that mental boost of knowing they're doing well and just their body's in a really good place and they're fit and, you know, they're going to do everything they can to support that, but it's pretty hard to uh, hard to mess that up if you're in good shape. Yeah, and, and Marchish obviously in good shape from her great results earlier this month and Hoffman as well having some great results coming into this as we see Reidner from Liechtenstein finish up. So that was 29th place for the Liechtenstein athlete. And here is Kini Bayeva of Kazakhstan coming to the finish. A large team from Kazakhstan here competing. And talking about teams, talking about teams, we've got the relay coming up tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, what, are your, what are your quick thoughts on, on that? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, the first time we're seeing a uh, mixed gender relay at, at both levels here, so that'll be exciting. Um, also exciting is that it's going to be a 5K because that's such a unique distance in skiing, and it sort of is like rides the line between a sprint and a distance race. So who they're going to pick for their teams is going to be really tricky. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, sort of a game of poker. You don't really want to show all your cards, and you got to decide who you're going to put where. That's uh, really, really well said there, Luke. And also, it is a 5K for tomorrow, but it's two laps of 2.5 each of those athletes will be skiing. Um, you know, they've taken out some of the big climbs, so they're gonna make it for a more interesting race. And here we've got Kate Oldham finishing up for the American team. She was 15th in the skate sprint last year in the World Junior Championships, first year U23 from Aspen. And she was saying that we were talking to her and. She was saying she really enjoys the broadcast, so great. So a shout out to Kate Oldman as she finishes up. Looks like she's gonna be about 34th spot here for the Aspen athlete. 
That is Cade Holden of uh, the U.S. team. So we, all, look, we often see at the start of the race, you know, athletes warming up, moving around. Can you just take us through a little bit of warm up, what they're actually going through, what they're actually doing leading up to the start of the race? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's going to depend a lot on, you know, on what the race and what the race is. And for something like a sprint qualifier, you're going to need to be a little more warmed up than something like the 20K. But um, it's really just kind of moving your body through all the different levels of, of the effort and getting your muscles ready for you know, what's going to be a pretty big uh, ask of them. And, um, you know, at this point in the week, honestly, you have gone so hard and you've had so much intensity that maybe you don't need that much warm up. And, you know, you get to the venue and you test your skis and it almost feels like you're ready to go. So it's going to depend a little bit on uh, who it is and how many races they've done. But, yeah, most people will move through all the levels of uh, intensity and then head out on course. Now, this is Rosie Fordham of the Australian team with looks like a very strong race. Could she get in the top 30? That would be a highlight for the Australian team. If Rosie can make it into the top 30, she caught the two people that started in front of her. So the Australian coming in with a very strong race here. They train a lot at Falls Creek, just in the Australian Alps. They had great snowfall there this year, and that has paid off, it looks like, with a potential top 30 for Rosie Fordham of Australia. And that is Kubelius uh, of Poland just coming in. And there is our leader right now in the hot seat. Helen Hoffman, first year U23, four days shy of her 21st birthday as Steven Amelia Wells comes in. Amelia Wells, yeah, bib 47 from Canada. She is a BC resident as well. Grew up skiing with Stra Strathcona Nordics on Vancouver Island and currently training with the Alberta World Cup Academy in Canmore. So Steve, just looking back, results uh, or the timing check at 7.8 kilometers. I don't think there's anyone coming that's going to knock Helen Hoffman off that hot seat. So Amelia Wells in her home province competing at the World U23 Championships. Australia. Coming in at 31st right now. We've got, I think, about another five or six finishers. There's Wells. What a great race for her at her first U23 champs. I and think just, you said she's from Strathcona Nordic yeah, on Vancouver correct. Island. Yeah. Wow. What what an effort by these athletes. What an effort by that athlete, Helen Hoffman, sitting in the hot seat with just a few more finishers. And yeah, we are day seven of competition here, winding down tomorrow is the last day for cross country events. Luke, what are some highlights from this week for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been really exciting. Um, you know, the fact that the organization and everything worked out so nicely in Whistler and the snow is so good and the courses are so good, especially with, uh, the, you know, the snow situation in much of Europe is really been really awesome um, for me that you know one of the big highlights has been uh, watching Kristen Fosness and just her kind of train rolling through this entire week um, I, you know that was kind of a big question for me is, is you know what how is she gonna do today because it was such a different event and there's been so classic heavy and um, yeah I mean that's been pretty impressive and then just it, I, I, honestly just the level of competition in every one of these races from the junior to the u23s has been so good and we've been treated to so many close finishes and tight and exciting races so I don't know, it's really for me even everything you could ask for from a Nordic Championship. Yeah, Steve, I would say the exciting racing from the announcing here, it's all those races have been so tight and what you want to see at a championship. Absolutely, yes, definitely. Now we've got the U23 men coming up uh, just in a little over a half hour as we see another Canadian coming into the finish here. I believe here. that's Marielle Ackerman from Kimberley, BC, another BC resident here racing yeah. in her home province. Yeah, this province has done very well setting up their athletes to make, on, make it onto the Canadian team and have good races here at the World U23 and Junior Nordic Ski Championships. Marielle Ackerman coming into the stadium. So just setting up a little bit for the U23 men. They'll be coming up a little bit shortly. So just talking a little bit through the top picks for the U23 yeah, men. Yeah, so Luke, who are some of your favorites for the U23? <laughs> 
Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you know, like we talked about a little bit, it's uh, this is kind of a whole new whole new ball game today. We've had a distance race already, but it was a classic distance race. It was a mass start, a lot of tactics, a lot of other things come in play here. But this is this is a man's race coming up. You know, this is the real deal. And there's a lot of uh, skate specialists, really strong, who are going to be looking to show show what they can do today. And um, you know, obviously Gus is going to be really strong. This is a great event for him. Another really good pick for me is um, Andreas Fjord and Ray from from Norway, who was actually the 50K national champion, beating the likes of Hans Christer Holen and Steven Hegstad Kruger. But he has been dropped from the start list. Oh, Late yes. last night, we got an updated start list, and Ree is not starting. We don't know why. We haven't talked to the Norwegian coach, okay. but he is not he here. He was definitely one of our favorites, too, uh, coming into these championships. Uh, definitely a surprise to not see him there. But he is not on the start list. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, it was pretty wide open as it was, but that really opens things up even more. And there's such a strong French contingent here, and we know the French kind of uh, traditionally are a little bit better in the skate. So, I don't know. It's going to be a barn burner. Yeah, <laughs> looking looking forward to it as we've got Savokova of Slovakia coming in. And Steve, very similar to what we saw in the women's race, how they're doing the start order. Again, because of the forecast, they're calling for snow. We don't know when that snow is going to come. So for the U23 men, we'll see those first starters or the, the higher ranked starters start in the middle of the field. So Zavokova coming in for Slovakia. We got a few more finishers to come in, but Helen Hoffman in the hot seat. We do have uh, setting up for a world championship win in the U23 category after a junior world championship last year. As Clementova, 51, our, fir our final starter, finishing up here at Whistler Olympic Park. We expected potentially much worse weather, but you can see the sun shining down on these athletes. We'll see if that sun continues for our U23 men. Coming up in just over a half hour. And here we go. She took place halfway into the race, into the leader chair, and will be crowned world champion from Germany. So Hoffman in the hot seat. They got the little fire going in front. The German team very happy here. Yeah, Steve, the, I, I believe there's one more racer out on course. So I think we can almost officially say there is our World 2-3 champ. Wow. Junior world champ. And now a U23 world champ four days before her 21st birthday. So Hoffman coming into this race, it was interesting. She had some strong OPA Cup results on the classic side and the sprint. But in Austria in December, she did win a gold in the 10K skate. And there we go. There is your podium. Hoffman in the middle for Germany. Maciusz of Poland in second place. And Bergana of Norway in third place. And there we get the celebration. This is setting up interestingly for the uh, U23 relay with the great results from Poland and Germany. It's going to be an interesting battle tomorrow in the relays. But there's your podium for U23 women 10K individual start free technique. <laughs> there we get the selfie. Machish wanting to get this. Yeah, all three of those women have to be super happy with those results. Uh, it's anyone's race out there in an individual. And uh, yeah, as you can see the results, just how close that was. You know, at 7.8 kilometers, Bergana was leading uh, and she lost some time on that descent and ended up third. Yeah, it's amazing. Just in that last 2.2 kilometers, how the order flipped around for the top three. And some of the other Canadians, Lillian Gagnon on 27th place. Rosie Fordham from Australia, top 30 finish. Amelia Wells at her first U23 champs, 31st, great race for her. Kate Oldham from Aspen in 40th place. Marielle Ackerman from Kimberley, BC in 44th. 
and she's currently going to the University of Vermont in the States, Steve. That's correct. Yeah, so the weather did not become a factor uh, today in the U23 women's race, the U23 men coming up in, again, in about 30 minutes or so here at Whistler Olympic Park. So maybe uh, just turning back to, uh, to Luke here in the booth, uh, any more thoughts on the U23 women as far as surprises, anything you might learn from this that the, the U23 men might learn from this? Any thoughts here uh, on this race, having seen how this uh, unfolded? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I think the men will be looking at that and, and seeing uh, a lot a lot of movement can happen late in the race and, you know, a lot can change. So pacing and dialing your pacing is going to be really important uh, for all the men. And, you know, like we talked about a little bit, you have to be a little bit honest with yourself and know where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are going to lie and kind of factor that into your race plan and, and say, you know, I, maybe I need to start a little bit slower because, um, you know, I know that the lactate's going to come for me earlier than it will for others, and you're going to have to use some of that free speed in the downhills and in the transitions really well. And then some of the other kind of workhorses are maybe going to be pretty happy about the way that things unfolded there and be like, all right, looks like if you, know, you want to go from the begun, you can do it. So I don't know. I mean, that's what's so nice about courses like this that are designed so well and you know, at such a high-quality venue is anything can happen, really. Yeah, so that's some great, great interesting information from Luke, and we're just going to uh, wrap up things here. And let's look at some highlights. So there are the medals that these athletes are going for. Bergana. Yeah, definitely one of the favorites today. And then Marchish. Marchish started to come on strong in oh, that second lap. That course so well. There is Hoffman. Hoffman going for a World U23 championship four days before her birthday. And Hoffman atop the world in Whistler.
Welcome everyone. Here we are in beautiful British Columbia, Whistler Olympic Park for the 2023 FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. We just saw the U23 women do the individual star 10K. And I'm Steve Scholes. I've got Tim Wintanyu here. Wasn't that an incredible battle that we just saw? Steve, that was an awesome race. We saw it come down to the final two kilometers. You know, the podium spot switch spots there. And it was four seconds separating the top three women. Yeah, four seconds, so close that it was all changing in those final couple kilometers. So now for a little bit more on the start order and the weather here and the U23 men's race, we're gonna go to Tom. Hey, thanks guys. As we talked about earlier in the day, the start order did get changed with the anticipation of precipitation, but it actually turned out to be a really awesome day and it hasn't snowed at all and it doesn't look like it's going to. But the men's race start order did get changed as well, so the fastest men will be starting in the middle of the pack. As we saw in the women's, that led to a really awesome race with some really fast skiers dueling it out for, in the middle of the race. So I think the same thing will happen with the men, obviously, because they're starting in the middle of the race. So it should be super exciting to watch. That was some great commentary by Tom. This is so interesting how the start order is shifted because of the anticipated weather as it was last night. And uh, so this is going to be interesting. Yeah, Tim. you know, Steve, driving up to the venue today, they're, they're calling for 15 to 20 centimeters. So a pretty significant snowfall, which hasn't come yet. It probably will come later today. Yeah, so we've got some highlights from yesterday's junior men's individual start race that was also very exciting. Yeah, so here's here's the Norwegian skier pushing to the finish. That is Molstad that got the bronze medal. This is Hagen, the 17-year-old high school student that was pushing the pace. Yeah, he was definitely going for the win out there, charging hard. Um, I, I definitely thought he was gonna walk away with the gold, um, but he ended up finishing in second place, silver medal from yesterday. Yeah, so Lars Hagen with a silver medal, 17 years of age, and here is Stone Cold Nico and Tola, silver medal in the 20K mass start, but he couldn't shake one of the Norwegians, but this time he could ski on his own, no emotion, just getting the job done on this course here, Tim. Yeah, yes, yeah, Stephen. He, nothing phased him out there. He skied identical all two laps, all the way to the finish, just set a strong pace and pushed on all the way through. So Nico Antola, junior men's world champion in the 10K interval start. And there we see some of the American skiers getting ready. Definitely the US, we can see Luke Jagger in there. We hope to have him in the boost uh, later, uh, later in the show. But uh, here is the course, Tim. Take our audience through it. Yeah, and so off the start, you know, it's changed a little bit from what we saw in the classic race, but they'll go under the bridge, start the first climb. They've extended that climb um, a little longer, so it's gonna favor those strong climbers, um, the grinders out there. And they come into a long descent, talking to some of the skiers out there. That descent is fast and not long enough to fully recover before they hit the second climb which takes them up to the checkpoint at 2.8 kilometers. And from there, they're gonna come over the top and have a, some twists and turns as they descend back to the final climb above the stadium. Yeah, the, definitely that first three kilometers, really tough, and then you've got that descent. And what we saw, Steve, from that women's race is that actually, you know, a lot of time was made up in the final two kilometers, those descents where there's some flats and how athletes were pushing over those flats. Okay, so earlier, Tom caught up with Nordic Canada's High Performance Director, Chris Jeffries, to talk perspective about these Junior and U23 World Championships. Well, it's, I mean, it's U20 and U23 World Championships, and like in the grand scheme of athlete development, it's just part of the pathway, and I think athletes, we're, all, they're always, we're always so focused on like the here and the now, and this is the most important thing we've ever done, but if we're always looking forward and looking ahead to future events and, and developing as an athlete, developing as a person, um, it's just it's just one race in that process, is, and it's a learning opportunity first and foremost. And I think that's, I know for us as a program, um, especially here at this kind of event, we really emphasize that with the athletes. Um, the coaches do a really good job of that. Um, 
And then it's kind of up to the athletes as well for yourselves to try and let that sink in. And it's always hard when you're in the moment and you're in that arena to, to kind of see that. But, uh, but I think the athletes that do the best in that, in that way, like they're the ones that will ultimately have the most success in, in sport long term. Yeah, Steve, that's some great perspective there from Chris Jeffries, you know, that whole learning piece. So we're seeing athletes here who are competing at their first championships. So they're learning tons of being at a high level race. And whereas other athletes, you know, we heard from Luke uh, from the women's race mentioned that some of these athletes are actually preparing for the world championships in Slovenia. And so again, they're taking everything from these races, learning from it to be applied at that championships later this year. Yeah, so we're going to check out the start list here again. The top 25 FIS ranked skiers are your first 25 starters. Yeah, and so we see Bib 105 there, Joe Davies from Pemberton, skied with Whistler Nordics and uh, dual citizen now skiing for Great Britain. Um, and then we're starting to see some of our top top starters here. Jonas Vika, really strong in that 20K Classic. Look for him in the skate. Edvar Sandvik, another favorite there from Norway. And uh, as we talked with Luke earlier, this is uh, a race for Gus Schumacher. Uh, definitely up there is one of my favorites today. Yeah, I'm getting very, very excited about this race. And we will be right back. Not quite yet. We'll be, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we're just going through the start list. Um, yeah, you know, the Americans definitely looking strong and uh, very excited about that performance. And we hope to have Luke Jagger in the booth later today to, uh, to give you some insight into that. And as the athletes get ready, we'll be right back. Coast Outdoors is Canada's premier cross-country ski store. We're proud sponsors of this year's World U23 Cross-Country Ski Championships at Whistler Olympic Park. We carry the best cross-country skis, boots, poles, clothing, and more. If you're serious about this sport, check out coastoutdoors.ca. Okay, so we are back here at Whistler Olympic Park and uh, we talked a little bit about the start list and some of the top skiers and I'm also interested about uh, Hirose of Japan, three gold medals in the World University uh, Games recently, another name to mention for the Japanese. Yeah, Stephen, he was in that lead pack there from the 20K mass start hanging in there, so we'll see how he can uh, race today in the individual. So one of the interesting names that isn't on the start list is Andreas Fjordan Re, who who initially was, and then they updated it. And Re is definitely, uh, as Luke Jagger in our earlier show noted, that he was definitely a favorite today. Not sure why he was taken out of the start list, but he's not here, and that really opens things up yeah, for the U23. I men. had him as one of my favorites too, and so we're not sure why he's not on this start list. Yeah, I'm. I am super excited to see how this event shakes out here at Whistler Olympic Park. The athletes are getting ready. Whistler Olympic Park for the FIS 2003 Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. The U23 men's individual 10K coming up here. Tim, how excited are you for this event? We just saw an, a dramatic women's race. What do you think about the men's race coming up? Yeah, Steve, anything can happen out there. You know, some of these athletes are going to be pushing strong off the start, pushing on those climbs. Are they going to fill it with lactic acid too early on? Will they be able to push the flats to the descent? We saw in the women's race how critical the last two kilometers were. There's a lot of descending, a lot of flats to push hard on. You know, we definitely think uh, we got to save something for those final 2K. There we can see Jonas Vika. He was our winner in the 20K mass start, getting his... His, his bib and his timing chips. 
And, you know, again, we've been talking about the start order. So the top 25 FIS ranked skiers will be going first. And we were, you know, that was due to the forecast weather, but it's looking pretty good out there. Yeah, right another now. beautiful day here in Whistler. You know, all these athletes are pumped with the quality of the snow, especially all the European athletes coming over. And uh, yeah, that snow hasn't come yet. Will it happen during this men's race or are all the athletes gonna luck out and uh, finish the race before the snow falls? Yeah, and this is again, Whistler Olympic Park, just, you know, site of the 2010 Vancouver Olympic Nordic events, day seven of competition. We've had the ski jumping and Nordic combined also get underway here. And uh, this is the U23 men's 10K individual free technique race. And we've also got the relay tomorrow. So just one more day after this, what a championships this has been as the athletes get ready here for this individual yeah, start Yeah, Steve, race. and what a championship. So, you know, a big shout out to the organizing committee, Black Tusk Nordic Event Society for you know, taking years to put this on. They've been planning for about three years for this event and they've done such an amazing job. And here's our start list. You know, one of our top Canadians out there, Remy Droulet, he's been on the World Cup. Not only does he race at the World Cup level, he's also studying at Harvard University. So amazing to see that balance at both high level of education and a high level of racing. Yeah, quite a few athletes that are trying to manage university and a top skiing career as well. So here we've got the Canadian 136, Max Holman. Yeah, another Canadian, Sasha Maison to look for, you know, but some of my other favorites for today, you know, Jonas Vika, definitely a distance skier, did so well in the 20K mass start. He also had a great sprint race, finishing fourth. So if he can uh, line everything up again today, we've seen that he's on form, he could have a good one. Julian Arnaud, another one. Uh, bib number 20, look for him. He was third in that 20K event. Um, and uh, also Gus Schumacher from the US, you know, skiing consistently well on the World Cup. Here he is at the U23s and uh, yeah, look for him having a great race. So we got our, our course map here. You know, they've changed things up a bit from the classic race, they extended that first climb. So it's gonna favor some of those grinders, some of those skiers who, who enjoy the climbing early on. Um, and they're gonna come descend down, probably one of the, the longest descent straightaways that we'll see today and then come up to the second climb that we saw in the classic race. We'll see them at the checkpoint, 2.8 kilometers there. Uh, and then they'll come over the top of the course and start descending. And we just, we saw in the women's race how important that descent is. Yeah, the, uh, the order was flipping around there on that final descent and only four seconds separating the top three. So every second counts here today in the individual start race. And there is one of the British athletes getting ready. And there's the Romanian skier getting ready. There are 24 countries and 64 athletes to start here. 10 kilometers, two times five kilometer lap. Now there's a Swiss skier. I was talking to the Swiss coach earlier today. He, they have just been super pumped with the results, you know. Uh, Kaylin getting third yesterday in the junior women category. He's just like pumped with the top 10 results that they've been consistently seeing here at these championships. And he did mention that, you know, some of the athletes are starting to feel the jet lag uh, effects from flying into these championships. We're gonna get underway very, very shortly. And another name to mention, Johnny Steele Hagenbuch, number 22. He took the gold in the skate race at the World University Games. And here we go, our first starter coming up, 101. Daniel Peshkov of Bulgaria, first year U23 from Bansko in Bulgaria, about two hours south of the capital, Sofia. And there we go, Peshkov of Bulgaria on course. 10K individual start, free technique, two laps of this five kilometer course here at Whistler Olympic Park. And the weather still holding together. Still a very, very nice day here after the initial forecasted storm. That looks like it's delayed a little bit. And here is Chiochetti of Italy. He was six in the classic sprint here this week, 24th in the 20K mass start. And at the Italian National Championships in skate, he was fifth. So a strong skater, the tall skier from Italy. Kiyoketti now on course. 
Now this is an interesting name to mention, Antonin Savary from Switzerland in the Swiss National Championships. He was first in the 10K skate. So another skier that really prefers this technique. It's from Ria, Switzerland, about an hour south of Bern. And he's gonna fill the burn <laughs> very shortly on this climb. There's two big climbs out of the stadium. Yes, yeah, Steve, I know we've talked a lot about how important that last two kilometer descending is, but you have to be in the mix early on in this race. You have to be a strong climber in order to set yourself up for that final 2K. So here is Nufa of Switzerland, third in the 10K at his national championships, 10th in the mass start here. He is one of those skiers for Switzerland that was really pushing the pace on the last lap in that mass start race, but just didn't quite have the skis in the sprint. Yes, yeah, Stephen, it's interesting to note that how he was pushing that pace in that mass start, those athletes that are pushing the pace in a mass start often do really well in an individual race. And here is Joe Davies, number five, from the Whistler area, a little further north, the Pemberton uh, area here in BC. Uh, skied for the Whistler Nordic Ski Club here, but as a dual citizen, he is now with the Great Britain team. He was 15th in the classic mass start race. He's gotta be pumped with that result and hoping to build on that here in the skate race. Yeah, I got a text from the great Roy Young saying that they were incredibly pumped and Joe Davies thinks he can be better in the skate race today. Here is Giovanni Tico. Now Giovanni Vano uh, Tico, he was the, uh, he raced on the World Cup just a week and a half ago in Lavinio at those Lavinio Italy World Cups. And he was 21st in the skate sprint there, sorry, 27th in the skate sprint. So another strong skater here, Giovanni Tico of Italy. And here is Dalhescu of Romania, the seventh starter. Again, if you're just joining us, the top 25 ranked skiers by FIS are your first 25 starters. And that was based on the forecast yesterday where Snowstorm making its way to Whistler. And there we see Steve, our first Canadian starter, Remy Droulet, studying at Harvard as well as racing on the World Cup. Um, yeah. Look for him to have a good one. And we heard from Luke Jagger that in an individual start race, you really have to be honest about your strengths and weaknesses and adjust to the course. So we'll see if Jolet, the physics major at Harvard, can do the right calculations for a great result here at Whistler Olympic Park. Five, 5K lap, two times. And you see Steve there, they're, they're lining up behind a wand. There's 30 seconds start between each of them, but their time doesn't officially start until that wand is broken. So we heard a beep, beeping them down. If they do start in front of that beep, that's fine. If their time starts when the wand is broken. And that is Gieselman of Sweden. He's underway here. And here's Murk, his sister Emma raced earlier today. Merck was recently third in the Scandinavian Cup in Falun just two weeks ago in the skate race. So another skier that prefers the skate technique. What a strong start for him. There is the Romanian Dalhascu. And here is Kevan Brink of Sweden. Now coming up, the Norwegian Lars Agner Yelmaset. He was the top qualifier in the sprint, but missed getting into the final in a very tight semi-final. Again, his father raced here in 2010, Steve, at the Vancouver Winter Olympics, winning a medal. Can Lars win a medal just like his father did on these trails? 
Yeah, and we talked to the Norwegian coach, and he, Lars is very determined to uh, usurp his dad at some point in his ski career, and perhaps winning a medal here will start uh, start getting into the realm of Oddbjorn Yelmaset and his incredible clear career of racing. And here is Elia Barp of the Italian team. Yeah, he is actually the Italian national champ in the 10K skate. He could have a really strong race today. Yeah, I definitely another skier that the Italian coaches penciled in looking for a strong result here today. And here is the German, Sasau. You know, in a recent Alpen Cup, he came second to Barp, so those two men could be battling it out there being 30 seconds apart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably a good person starting 30 seconds in front of him to, to push him along in this course. You know, there'll be There'll be spots out on the course where they'll be able to see the competitor in front of them and use them as a gauge of where they are and what kind of speed pacing they are doing out there. So here is Hirose of Japan. Three gold medals at the World University Games in Lake Placid just a couple weeks ago and 11th in the 20K Mass Start in Classic. Yeah, he was right in that lead pack in that Classic race, Steve. Um, he just didn't have enough at finishing kicks, so... Well, yeah, he could, if he's on form, he could have be fighting for a podium spot out there. So Rose from Japan, the top skier for the men from Japan out on course. And now, Sabin Kupa of France. His sister raced yesterday. His mom is, is an Olympian from 94 in Lillehammer. And we'll give a shout out to his mom, Elizabeth. I'm sure watching this broadcast, cheering on and watching her son. Coming up next will be one of our American skiers, Big Z, or in Canada, we'd call him Big Zed, Zanin McMullen. Coached by Eric, coached by Eric Flora at APU, 18th in, 18th in the 20K. So APU is the team up in Anchorage, Alaska, led by Eric Flora. And here is Remy Bourdain of France. He was fifth in the 20K, which was a surprise. Fifth in the 20K, definitely the French team. We've been talking to them. They are so pumped at how well the senior team has been doing on the World Cup. As we get into some of our top FIS ranked athletes, again, the top 25 ranked athletes are your first 25 starters. And here, there's Bib 119 Vika, Steve. Again, our winner from that mass start 20K, um, and also fourth in the sprint. He's definitely showed that he is on form, peaking for these championships. You know, that such depth in that Norwegian team that these U23 athletes, this is definitely, you know, a part of their highlight for the season. If they don't make it onto a World Cup, it's often so challenging to get a spot in the World Cup. And so these athletes are peaking for these championships here. Yeah, and we, when we were talking to Luke Jagger, just saying that when you're in good shape, the recovery just comes very naturally. So we'll see how Jonas Vika recovers after his gold in the 20K. And here, speaking of the 20K, Julian Arnaud, third in the 20K with a massive performance there. And again, Steve, he raced that 20K mass start without gloves, and he's out there again without gloves. No, we don't see many competitors racing without gloves. Yeah, that's a very French style. You see a lot on the World Cup. I've and also seen it a lot in biathlon. Uh, just the, again, having that uh, no, no glove for trigger, the trigger pull when they're shooting at the target, so. So here's Jan Friedrich Dürks. A stronger classic skier, a lot of strong classic results. And here is the American, Johnny Steele Hagenbuch. He won the skate race at 10K for US, uh, US Nationals from Sun Valley. Also the youngest ever American Burka Biner win winner at 19 just a couple years ago. And also raced for that US World Cup team, World Relay 
team that won gold at the Junior World Championships 2019 and, and 2020. Steve, and and he also just won the 30K skate at the Fisu Lake Placid a couple weeks ago. So definitely showing super strong results in the skate races. You know, if he's on form, he could be challenging the podium spot. Okay, so here is Gaspar Rousset. He was 11th place at the U23 championships back in 2022 in the skate race. Rousset. Heading out onto the 5K course here two times around. And now, and now Edward Sandvik. He took second in the 20K, 25th in the Norwegian National Senior Championships in the skate race. Again, he seems to be on form for these championships. He's peaking for it. If he still has that fitness here after that grueling 20K mass start, he could be up there as well. Another interesting note, he's an engineering student back in Norway. So again, another athlete you know, racing at the high level as well as studying at a high level. And here is Gus Schumacher, the Beijing Olympian. Earlier this season on the World Cup, he was 18th at Davos in a 20K skate, and he also was 35th in the Tour de Ski. And Gus getting that free skate technique right off the start. Definitely someone to watch here. He is the highest FIS ranked athlete starting out here as our 25th starter. Yeah, I would say this this course suits Gus. He's just consistently skis well on the climbs and the descents, pushes the flats. I talked to him yesterday. He's really looking forward to the descent, the last 2K. You know, he's just hoping his legs have enough to keep pushing down on that downhill. Yeah. So Gus Schumacher heading out. You can see that first climb out of the stadium. And now you can start to see some athletes lapping around, heading out onto their second lap. And here is, that looks like Johannes Wurla. Yes, number 127, the Finnish skier. So now we're moving into group three, Tim. So this is where we had the top skier start in the middle. And now we have our, our, our later group, our third group of skiers starting. And we've got 64 starters here. And there is Gus Schumacher. Oh, it's great to see how low he gets in his tuck. You know, every, on an individual race, every second matters. And so oftentimes, as athletes fatigue, they forget about how important that tuck is and on Gus, the descents. Gus Schumacher, of course, uh, world junior champion in the 10K Classic. But the, the image that will forever be burned in my mind of Gus Schumacher is the 2019 World Junior Championship relay when he attacks on the final climb at Latte and pulls away from, I believe, the Russians and the Germans and Norwegians. That is an image that will forever be burned in my mind. A very strong skate skier, a great all-around skier, particularly in the distance, ca distance races, but he's had some great skate races on the World Cup this year. And that is beautiful oh, technique, Tony. Tim. Yeah, that's the V2, as the Americans call it. We call it one skate here in Canada. Again, using the upper body, one pole plant per leg push as he goes up the long climb. This is the first of two long climbs. And I can tell you, Steve, definitely on that second lap, this is where athletes are going to start to feel it into this climb. They'll finish one lap through that stadium, and they're going to start to really feel the legs burn. Who can maintain that pace up this climb second time around? So Gus Schumacher, our top-ranked FIS skier here, the 25th starter. Now, of course, on that first lap, the first big climb. Here is Remy Bourdain, fifth in the classic race. Three days ago, the 20K mass start, a very, very solid result. And there's 119 Vika, you can tell he's gaining some time on uh, Bourdain, who started in front of him. He's coming into the time check here at 2.8 kilometers into the race, still early on, a lot can happen. We'll see where he finishes up into second place right now. And 
Third place, five seconds off. So not a bad start here. And again, it's always tricky on this, this 2.8 kilometer time check. You want to be in the mix, but you've also got to play to your strengths and be honest about your weakness, weaknesses. As we heard from uh, Luke Jager in our women's race, we'll have Luke back during the men's race here, giving us some insight. And it's really, really cool. You know, just you've got to be thinking about how you can race a course like this because you're on the course by yourself. Play to your strengths. Be honest about your weaknesses. And here, again, we've got some athletes lapping through. Yeah, so bib 106 there starting off second lap, whereas bib 130 is on their first lap. So six is Tico of Italy. 130 is Malchav of Bulgaria. And here's Yelmaset. Steve, he's coming into the stadium here. I think he's going to be a little bit behind Mark's time as he laps through at the halfway point. So this is Yelmaset, known much more on the classic side. He's had some great results in the World Cup in the classic technique. He was a machine in the classic races, the classic sprint races, leading from the front, but just missed out making to the final. And Steve, just to put it into perspective, he's six and a half seconds off New York's time at the halfway point. At 2.8K, though, they were almost even for time. So again, Mork skiing away on that downhill, making up some time. And here is Elliot Barp of the Italian team. Behind Mork as he laps through after five kilometers. Here's Elia Bart, fourth place right now, pretty much tied with Savary of Switzerland. Still a little bit early here. Those are your 13 starters through. Yes, yeah, Steve, it's early, but 19 seconds is a lot of time to make up over 5K when everyone's pushing, pushing hard. And there's Rousset into seventh place, 10 seconds back. That's 23, so we're gonna see Sandvik and Schumacher shortly. This, just so you know, this is the top of the second big climb. They get a checkpoint at 2.8 kilometers, but it's about another 200 meters to push to the top. And then there's that long, about a kilometer and a half descent. And here is Sandvik, second in the 20K mass start. And just look at how well he transitions from his one skate to offset as he hits the steeper pitch of the climb. Schumacher coming into your screen now. You know, started 30 seconds back. He's going to be hunting down um, Sandvik. So Schumacher looking relaxed. He's going to slot into 11th spot right now, 12, 12 seconds. seconds down. Yeah, he's going to definitely have to pick up the pace if he wants to fight for a podium. You know, the coaches, you can hear a lot of yelling going on. The coaches are going to be cheering him on, giving him time splits. Um, and he's going to have to gauge where he is, how redlined he is. Can he increase that pace and try make up some time? So 112, that's... Yelmaset heading out on his second lap. That's the first big climb on the five kilometer course. So right now your leader at 2.8 kilometers is Murk of Norway. The top 25 skiers have been through that checkpoint. Yelmaset was second at that point, but he's fallen off the pace at five kilometers, Jonas Vika was up there at 2.8 kilometers. Nufa of Switzerland, Savary of Switzerland were also in the mix. Very, very close. Hard to really read things here on this first lap. And there's Bib 136, you saw Mad Max Holman from Canada. And there is Jonas Vika, 20K mass start, gold medalist. Fourth place in the sprint. Coming already, around at the five kilometer checkpoint. Already point. he's behind Mark's time, so Mark is setting a strong pace out there. Will he be able to maintain it? So he is definitely falling off the pace of Mark. He was 
No, at 2.8K, he was just five seconds back, and now already 16 seconds, seven, almost 17 seconds back. So he, he's lost 12 seconds to Mork on that descent from one of the high points on the course. So is he, are some of these athletes saving something as they go into this last lap, or is it just the ski speed uh, that Mork has on that downhill? So this is Kupa, 20th in the 20K mass start. Just behind him, a skier that's just started, 140, Keremov of Kazakhstan. And what you're seeing here on your screen is the first big climb, and it actually does go up to the highest point on the course. Yeah, they sort of hit this plateau here. It's a bit of a flat, but you can see some of the racers higher up, you know, grueling it out, grinding it out in the offset technique as they make their way, as Steve said, to the top of the course. Here we've got, on his first lap, that's 131. Franco Del Faro, Fara of Argentina, really tall guy, this Franco from Argentina. And you can see that he's gaining on 130. So Del Faro of Argentina gaining, just getting a little bit of a draft there, but gaining on the skier in front yeah, of him. Yeah, Steven, so actually, you know, some of these athletes, when you either lap someone or catch someone, you want to try ski in behind them, they can pull you around. And you saw he went in behind to see if he could get a ride and realize, oh, I'm moving too fast. So I got to go around him and make a pass. Now here is Murk. From Norway, he was our leader at 2.8 kilometers, our leader at five kilometers, pushing up the biggest, second biggest climb on this course. After this, he's he, got the descent. He currently has a 42 second lead over second place. Steve. He is looking so strong. He does not look showing any sign of fatigue at all as he's powering up over this climb. He definitely showed he could ski that descent really well and make up time. Can he make up even more time this last time around? Yeah, so at 2.8 kilometers, he was six seconds up on Nufa, and now he is 42 seconds up. So Murk is starting to shape up to be a favorite here for the win. You can see his coach running beside him, giving him as much info. You know, we're seeing splits on the screen, but they're also relaying info from other spots on the course from other coaches and giving splits from some of these later starters. So we're gonna see, looks like Yelmaset come into the picture shortly here for the U23 men. But Mork looking so strong. He was a junior world champion in 2021. Look at almost said skiing so strong here, but look at that pace that Mark had set. Look at the time he has made up here at the as they lapped through, Hel Helmuset was only six seconds back, and now he's 16 seconds. So in 2.8K, Mork has made up another 10 seconds, Steve. Yeah, Mork is looking so strong. And you can hear the coaches pushing on these athletes, relaying information. But this is such a crucial point in the course. You've got to push over the top of the climb before the descent. Can he pull back 16 seconds in 2.2K, Steve? I don't think that's likely, but you never know. He is determined here. You can see just gritting his teeth as the Norwegian coach runs beside him, just trying to will him over the top of this climb. You almost had 16 seconds down on our leader here at 7.8 kilometers. You just hear the breathing the agony and the pain that he's going through to push over the top of the climb here. He knows he's gonna get that descent. It's almost like there's a finish line, a semi-finish line right there at the top of the climb. This is Bria of Poland. He's on his first lap. So Merkerberg recently was third in the Scandinavian Cup in a 10K skate just behind 
Anderson and Amundsen. Anderson, of course, winning a World Cup, and Amundsen also recently were winning a World Cup. So Merck is in very good company with his recent results, looking very, very strong here. Here we've got 138. This is Thomas Lucas, and here is Joe Davies. Coming into the finish, last 100 meters. Daniel Peshoff from Bulgaria. Stepping on the gas. Again, so time so far. native to this area from Pemberton, I believe. Skied for Whistler Nordics. Had a great result in the 20K mass start, finishing 15th. He's hoping he can build on that. And we just saw Mork there. Mork from Drammen, Norway, where they held the big classic World Cup every year. Here's 116, Samek Kupa making his way up the second big climb on this course. Yeah, Steve, I'm just checking here. It, and he's sitting in sixth place, 52 seconds off the lead at 7.8 kilometers. And here comes Mork into the stadium, your 10th starter setting the pace on this course, the final lap here. Look at the lead he has over our current hot seat. Antonio Savary, Savary from Switzerland. Mork driving to a world championship here. It's a possibility for the Norwegian. His sister raced earlier today, the drama Norway skier, setting the pace today. Right what a ski here for Mork of Norway. So far in the race, he uh, is dominating this race so far, but still many starters to come in. Look at that lead. He has 48 seconds over second place. You know, um, going back to some of those previous time checks out on course, and it's gonna have to take some superhuman powers for the, the other men to catch him the time he set. Now we've got Jonas Vika, 38 seconds down on Mork. Mork wasn't taking it easy on the first lap. He pushed on the second lap and has dramatically increased his lead on some of these skiers. Yeah, uh, Vika was only 17 seconds back at five kilometers and has lost even more time at the 7.8 kilometer mark. So our 20K Classic Mass Start world champion Going to be tough to get a medal here, but it's still a possibility. But winning seems to be out of the question. But this is your best. That was 110. That was more your best gear so far. And here's Yelmaset. He's got about 25 seconds to the finish. This could be a medal, medal position here for the Norwegian. Steve, I'm just looking at dime checks. Yeah, I think he's gonna end up with a silver medal. We have a pretty comfortable lead over the next couple skiers coming through. You know, the real battle out there right now is going to be for third place. And Helmaset coming in, it's gonna be awesome. He's gonna get a medal at this championships. And his father got a medal here in 2010 at the Vancouver Olympics. Yeah, so Yelmaset in the running for a medal here. But still quite a few more skiers to come in. This is 113. This is Barb of Italy. You know, he's battling out for that third place position. He was only one second back of third place at 7.8K. Every second matters here. I don't think it's gonna be enough here for Bart. A strong ski, but can he hold on to the third best time? Barb across right the, line. To the line. And he's third best right now. What an effort. Yeah, there's a few more racers out there who could challenge his time for third, so there is a good battle going on for that bronze medal, and this is one of those skiers here. Bib one, two, three, Gosset coming through at sixth place at 7.8 kilometers. You know, 43 seconds back of the lead, but only four seconds off Barb's time at this point. Here's, here's Sandvik, Tim, and it's all very close for those lower placings in the podium right now. So Sandvik, still a chance here. He's sitting fifth spot here at 7.8 kilometers. 
Yeah, he's only two seconds off third at this point. So there is a battle shaping up for third, fourth, and fifth. And here's Hiroshi coming through. Will he edge out Barb? Not quite at the line. Hirose with a strong ski, but not quite enough. The times are very, very close for third position here. Maybe he just peaked a little too early for these championships. You know, he won three gold medals at the recent FISU games in Lake Placid. But he put in a good effort today. Here's Sandvik over the top of the climb. There is a chance for a medal at 7.8 kilometers. He was two seconds out of the third place position. Steve, you can just tell his legs are screaming at him right now. They want him to stop skiing those legs, but he's going to just keep pushing through. Can he move up? Here is Coupa of France. Slotting in at eighth spot. <laughs> Well, we're going to see a few more skiers come in shortly that are very close. You know, it looks like it's going to be the battle for the bronze that's remaining. Mork way out in front at the finish. Here comes, here comes Zandon McMullen, mid-117. Currently skis up in Alaska, I believe, Steve. He's with the APU Nordic team up in Anchorage, Alaska. McMullen can't for right now. But here comes Jonas Vika. This could be a bronze medal finish for the Norwegian. Yeah, does he have enough? I think he could do it. Italian for third. He's not going to get silver here. He's got about 15 seconds. But every second counts here, Tim because he's got a few other skiers that are going to be contending with him. He's got to drive to the finish if he wants another medal. Gold in the 20K Classic. Could it be a medal here in the 10K skate? It looks like he's currently sitting in third place. Can he hold that spot and be on the podium again today, Steve? So Merck way out in front by 16 seconds over Yelmaset. And then Vika sitting third right now. Sorry, 26 seconds for Helmaset. Vika coming in 43 seconds down. But also we're looking for Sandvik. And Sandvik was only two seconds behind Vika at the 7.8 kilometer mark. And also Rousset, 123. He's got a chance here. Rousset, he's very, very close. But this is... Julian Arnaud finishing up for France. Ninth spot. But Rousset of France, 123, has got a chance here. This is the German, Jan Friedrich Dirks, coming in. He's looking for maybe a top 10 position here. They're just waiting for Gaspar Rousset. There, I believe Rousset's coming to your screen. He was five seconds off Vika at 7.8 kilometers. He's going to have that information at the top of the course. His coaches are going to be telling him he needs to push. Every second counts. Can he move himself up into third position? Rousset going for a medal here. Could it be another medal for France? They've been motivated, motivated by the results of the senior team. Steve, this is going to be tight. He is really pushed over those last two kilometers. It's about 13 seconds to the finish for Rousset. Could he do it? Could he finish in a top three spot? Rousset driving to the line. Is it going to be enough? The lunge. Oh, my goodness. Unofficially moves to fourth by three tenths of a second. That is the chip time. They'll look at that. But here comes Sandvik. Can Sandvik get that bronze medal position for Norway? Sandvik, it's about 15 seconds from this point, Steve. I'm not sure he pushed hard enough over the last 2K to take the bronze. It's going to come right down to the wire here. Sandvik driving to the line, but it's not enough. Not enough for Sandvik. Oh my goodness. 
The final two kilometers just changing things by a second or two. And so, Steve, unofficially, I have Mork as your winner. Helmaset in second place and Vika in third. Here comes Gus Schumacher. He's going to be oh so close to those metal positions. My goodness, just a few seconds separating about five spots here at the finish in that chase for a bronze medal. Schumacher from Anchorage, Alaska. An Olympian in Beijing. Gus Schumacher sliding into 14 spot. But so close. 20 seconds separating about 15 skiers in that battle for bronze. Oh my goodness. So Mark out front by 26 seconds. Yelmaset getting what looks like a silver medal. Still many finishers here, but because the top 25 were your first 25 starters, and there is Mork. What a race for the Norwegian. And Jonas Vika looks like he's in third. Rousset in fourth by maybe three tenths of a second. That'll be reviewed, but Martin, Martin Kirkeberg Mork sitting in the leader's chair. He's going to have to get comfortable in there because we've got many more finishers with the top 25 starting. Oh my goodness, that battle for bronze that was, was That was the insane. real battle out there, Steve. It was so tight. We just see Korosec of Slovenia coming in. Yeah, we, we, we're just trying to digest this race here for the U23 man, how close it was. And uh, yeah, that, that was a true, true battle out there for that bronze. Yelmaset, second place, matching his dad's silver here at the Vancouver Olympics. And Mork, you know, he did have that really strong Scandinavian Cup skate race, and that, uh, that, that showed some form, and he delivered here with the top, top result. So here, just helping us digest, helping us digest here, we've got an Olympian here in the booth with us, just trying to digest these results and, and get his thoughts on this battle, uh, particularly for the bronze medal. So we've got Luke Jagger here, a Beijing Olympian, a member of the US ski team, not racing today, but Luke, what a crazy battle that was for bronze. Just, just help us digest that. Yeah, I mean, it was really a clinic from Martin Kirkeberg mork and really the entire Norwegian team uh, looking like probably a sweep, which, um, yeah, I don't know, everyone will have different feelings about it, I guess, but Reset not quite quick enough to upset that uh, that sweep, but, I mean, gun to tape from, from Mork was really impressive. He was obviously feeling good today, and when you're feeling good, and even on a course like this, you can do that. What I'm really impressed by was the race from Lars Helmeset, who, like you said, I think a little more known for his sprinting, a little more known for his classic skiing, and to be able to come throw down here is just, I mean, you know, a testament to how well-rounded of a skier he is, and... Also, you know, how dialed the Norwegian WAX team and their entire operation obviously must be here. And yeah, I mean, you know, we all know it. It's the motherland of skiing, and I guess uh, they showed us that today. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, what about Rousset? You know, he's getting the splits on the, at the top of the climb and the descent. He knows that it's, it's going to be a second plus or minus. Like, just how, like, I mean, obviously getting those splits and processing that during the race and then trying to process the fact that he was so close to a medal. Like, just take us through that as an athlete. Uh, you know, just that experience. I mean, that is that is tough for him, but he left it all out there clearly. Yeah, I mean, you know, to some extent when it's that close, you're almost just rolling the dice a little bit. The way that you corner every little thing, you know, you're, the way your skis are running, it's a second or two, and uh, that's pretty easy to find or lose just based on kind of random factors out there. So definitely would be pretty gut-wrenching and painful for him, but still a pretty phenomenal outing. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely a great battle out there. And uh, we've got a number of more finishers here to come. Um, but let's talk maybe just a little bit about the American skiers out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, such a, such a strong uh, women's race from the Americans. And, um, you know, I think... 
the men uh, were probably, you know, hoping for, for just as good or, or even better. And, you know, maybe generally speaking, a little bit of disappointment for them today. But we have to remember also, like, for this Norwegian team of U23s, this is the focal point of their entire season. And, you know, for them, they're, the opportunity for world championships and, and a lot of World Cups throughout the season isn't there as much just because their senior ranks are so strong. So, you know, for a lot of these guys, like, Gus and Johnny and Zandon and JC, you know, they've been racing so much this season. And, and you know, like coming across, uh, you know, the ocean to come do these races is no small ordeal. And, and they got a lot of racing in their bodies and, and the championship of, of the world for the seniors coming up. So definitely disappointing maybe to, to not be able to be as competitive as I'm sure they like to be, but just a little bit of a different situation that they find themselves in. Yeah, now one thing we've been talking about is some of these athletes being in university. Um, I believe Mork is in university. Uh, maybe Tim can, can confirm that. But uh, how, as a university athlete, you, you ski for University of Utah, um, how do you manage, you know, uh, university traveling? I mean, you've got to pick your spots when you race. And, uh, but as a team, how, how did, how, as an athlete, how do you, do you manage that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's going to look a little different depending on what your university setup looks like. And, you know, obviously uh, the structure of the, post-secondary education in, in Europe is a little different than with the NCAA system here. But, you know, I think um, depending on, on uh, how you kind of structure it, it can really be a blessing to kind of have something to take your mind off of the, the ins and out of skiing all day. Yeah, so here's Max Holman, the Canadian from Thunder Bay, now trains with the Alberta World Cup Academy. Holman coming into the finish for Canada, looking for maybe a top Canadian spot. That was, a, that was a paddle between the Canadians there. Great race by Max. You know, he looked so strong at the Canadian trials earlier this year in Prince George. Here is 34. Minisov of Kazakhstan. So, Luke, you know, we talked about the U23 championships, the actual Open championships. Some of these athletes have been named to both teams. You know, they're balancing school. Where do you think their priorities lie? Are they, are they trying to peak for the U23 championships, or are they trying to focus more on that senior championships, or are they thinking, ah, oh, I got more years ahead of me, I'm going to focus more on Open championships later on in my career? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. It's going to depend a little bit on, on who the athlete is, but there's a lot of things to consider, you know? I mean, like, um, you know, sort of what the events are. Maybe this isn't the strongest events for them at this championship, so they're going to go all in on the U23s because it's a little bit of a less competitive field, but maybe you're, you know, like Ben Ogden or someone, and you're an amazing classic sprinter, and you have an opportunity to fight for a medal at the senior championships, and maybe that's where all your energy is going to go. Um, really, yeah, depends a lot on kind of where where they're coming from. There is our leader. We just saw Thomas Lucas from Czech, Czechia finish, but that is Martin Kirkeberg, Kirkeberg Mork, our and, hot and seat. Steve, he's getting real comfortable in that hot seat, and I think he's going to be there until the, the end of the race. And here's Avelino Neplin coming in with what looks like a 20, top 25 right now. Again, if you're just joining us, our 25 top ranked FIS skiers were the first 25 because of the forecasted weather, but weather was not an issue for these athletes. Here is uh, Matila of Finland. Looks like he's just going up the big climb, and here's one of our Canadians. Sasha Masson from the Yukon, currently training with the Pierre Harvey Training Center in Quebec. And looks like he's going for a top Canadian spot today. I think he's got a chance here to maybe be top Canadian. He's got about 15 or 20 seconds to go. From Whitehorse Yukon, Sasha Masson coming into the finish. And both his parents are Olympians in cross country skiing, representing Canada. And Sasha's finishing looks like will be 30th, 30th spot. spot. Sasha, so we still have another about 23 finishers here. And you can see just in the background, Mark getting the congratulations from the other skiers. Kind of looks like he's got a barbecue going there <laughs> as he sits and relax. And here is Jan Stulben of Germany. 
Okay, not, I don't think quite gonna get a top 20 position for the German. Yeah, and you, we talked about the depth of the Norwegian team. You know, the Scandinavian Cup, the skiers that, that couldn't quite make the Norwegian World Cup team. There was uh, Anderson, who's won a World Cup. There was Amundsen, who just won a World Cup. And now third in that Scandinavian Cup from a couple weeks ago, Murk, who he's got a U23 World Championship. So it just shows the depth of that team as one of the Chilean skiers. Just lapping through, that's Martin Flores. First time at a World U23 Championships. And Steve, tomorrow we got the relay happening, both the junior men and women in the mixed relay, and then the U23 men and women in a mixed relay as well. So it's two men and two women from, from each country racing. Uh, one thing that they'll have to decide is who races for Norway. I was talking to uh, Bergana, who was bronze medalist here uh, just after a race, and uh, she was quite hopeful that she would get on that relay team, but but uh, it's not an easy choice for some of these teams. Yeah, and uh, Luke, just take us through that uh, relay event tomorrow. You know, it's five kilometers. Do you think there's going to be athletes trying to break early on in some of those one first leg, second leg, or is it going to come down to uh, kind of that fourth leg final sprint? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And the 5K versus the 10K is a pretty big difference. It's going to really change the way it unfolds. Um, every leg has such a unique role. And traditionally, the first leg will will really, the first leg and even the last leg will often sometimes be the most tactical, kind of sprint-oriented legs, just with a lot of sitting in the pack done. And then the middle two legs are some, often kind of the workhorse legs. And the third skate leg, especially, is where they'll probably try and put their strongest skater who can just really go out and, you know, grind that last leg and try and get their finisher, who maybe will be a little bit more more of a sprint oriented person to have a little bit more uh, leeway so that they can save their legs and be in it for the for the finish but yeah i mean it's going to be interesting and a lot of different a lot of different tactics and a lot of different teams with really strong skiers so it'll be great you know so when you're having some of these meetings the night before once the team's selected are you are you talking about plan a plan b plan c so you're prepared for whatever unfolds yeah i mean i think definitely and you know you'll be looking at the other teams and and what you think uh you know their t team is going to look like and uh who they're going to put where and um, you know, you'll also look a lot of the nature of the course and be like, well, have these races been staying together or have they been getting really drawn out? And if they've been, you know, if the conditions are really fast and it stays together, then you'll want a sprinter on your last leg who's going to be able to, to be there and have the, you know, the speed to finish. But, you know, like a day like today, the grinders are really pulling away from everybody. So maybe the strategy is just to kind of put some, some workhorses on there who are just going to fry at the sprinter's legs and, and um, yeah, take it from the front. So you know, one thing we just noticed on our screen, just to update our viewers, Mule of Slovenia was catching Matila of Finland. So Mule looks like he might come in with a solid result. You're not to challenge our, uh, our top result, but that's something to watch for. Yeah, Stephen, just again, talking about these relays, you know, we got the junior relay happening and the U23. I think, you know, some of these U23 athletes have seen each other on the World Cup. They kind of know where the strengths, where the weaknesses are, and it's always the junior category. They're only really gauging each other based upon these championships. They haven't had a lot of experience racing against each other, and that's going to be interesting how it plays in tomorrow's tactics. Yeah, it's going to be going to be really interesting, and I'm I'm kind of interested to get a, a little bit of a, a handicap of, of the races tomorrow from uh, from Luke, what his thoughts are on the different teams, uh, particularly for U23, how that might that might shape up. Is we've got Lars Young Vic coming across the line. He skis on the World Cup for the Australians coming in, and here is Mule of Slovenia, and looks like he's going to maybe come in with a top. 35, 36 position as Matila finishes for Finland. But Luke, just again, thinking about the relays and, and just maybe the, the U23 relays, how you might think, how that might shape up. Um, I think, you know, Norway, USA, Germany, uh, a few other countries looking good going into that. Yeah, so the order is, is it male? It is going to be female, male, okay. female, male is what we were, what we heard yesterday. Yep, definitely. So, I mean, I think, you know, uh, if I'm putting a team together, I probably would look at, 
at uh, who, who was sprinting really well and who was able to have the legs to, to last the entire sprint day. It's, you know, the classic technique is going first, obviously. And anyone who was able to last all the way through the sprint day, maybe make it to a sprint final, I think is going to have the legs to be able to last the full five kilometers for the first leg and, uh, yeah, be able to be really strong in the finish. So in the case of the Norwegians, um, now Fosnes was the best sprinter for the women, yep. but for the men, uh, who might that be for the Norwegians that they might put on that final final leg? Maybe not Mork. Maybe they would put Mork in that. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. It's yeah. a good question. I mean, if I'm in yeah. the Norwegians, you know, I think Helmset is really the weapon that you have to be either on the front or the end of that. And he proved today that he's really capable in skating as well. And we know he's got the fast switch fibers and he can sprint really well. So for me, he's a really good candidate for the um, for the for the anchor leg. And you know, someone like Jonas Vico who uh, was still managed to nab fourth place in the sprint, which, uh, you know, isn't as impressive in the Norwegian ranks as in other countries, but is obviously has the capability to sprint really well and has the capacity to, to you know, make it as hard as he wants. I think he's a really good candidate to be your classic skier there. And then, you know, Fosnes, I think probably, that's who I'd probably put on the first leg if I were making the Norwegian team. And then Bergan is probably perfect for the third leg. So, yeah. I don't know, the thing is, you could, you know, pick blindly any four of them out of the room and they had to put together a really good team so <laughs> <laughs> again just the depth of that Norwegian team now what about something like the American team and we, we don't want you to necessarily give out all the <sighs> all the analysis so far but what are some of the names that are kind of in the mix yeah for discussion for the US team definitely I mean you know obviously you're gonna have to put Gus on that team and he he's pretty capable of either skating or classicking and 5k is a really good distance for him because you know he's he's got some of that sprint physiology but also he's just really a grinder and can really go with any pace that's gonna be set now that was just Gabe Gledhill the uh, BC athlete now with the Great Britain team coming across and the line. And Erickson Moore, who, another Canadian who's currently training in Thunder Bay at the National Team Development Centre. So you talked about Gus Schumacher for the U.S. team, but what are some other names for the men and women in the mix of, of discussion? Yeah, I mean, on that, you know, on that, that kind of like really grindy workhorse skate like we were talking about, I think Sophia is probably, in my opinion, maybe the obvious choice. And, you know, she's just skiing really well right now. And, um, you know, with these long hills, that's just really what, where she shines. So I think, you know, her or, or Novi both would be great choices for, for that third leg. And, and um, Sydney has just been classic skiing so well and is kind of on it, sprint and distance. And yeah, I mean, you know, her and then yeah, with the, with Zandon and Johnny, you're not gonna make a you're not gonna make a bad choice there either way. So um, yeah, I don't know. I I uh, I, don't, I can't say I'm giving you insider information because I don't even know. So <laughs> right, they're not telling you that. that <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like some <laughs> tough decisions for the coaches later tonight Absolutely. as they put the teams in. And I'm interested also about the German team because clearly Lohmann on Hoffman for the women are skiing well, and I think it's it's maybe Hoffman for the first classic leg, and or sorry uh, for the skate leg, and Lohmann for the classic leg. So that's another team I think they could surprise definitely tomorrow. Yeah. I mean they've got to figure out the the men's side. Yeah. No, I would say for me the the Germans are sort of the dark horses uh, of this whole race because you know they have the they have all the players to put together a really good relay and depending on how how the race shapes up you know they could really be in it at the end so yeah it'll be definitely be interesting and it, it, once it comes down to a sprint in a relay you just don't know how it could shake out as we've got 156 this is Chenik of Slovakia coming in we had 64 starters. Chenik comes in, looking for it, sliding into about 50 second spot here. So this is Whistler Olympic Park, if you're just joining us. Martin Kuckerberg mork in the hot seat. Or just taking a break from the hot seat as he talks to some of his fellow competitors. Yeah, that hot seat might have been too hot there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got James uh, Sleeman coming in for the uh, for the Great Britain team. And as this winds down, we've got some more racing winding up here with the Nordic combined coming up very shortly. It's the junior individual Gunderson event for for the women and it's going to be the cross country 5k that's going to be coming up very shortly and then the men's 10k and we've got uh billy and max doing the commentary on that they'll be coming in shortly and and there was some very exciting 
uh, racing there in the team event a couple days ago. That was a relay that came down to, to the that. final climb. Exactly, we saw that in the 20K mass start here in the cross country and it happened in the Nordic combined that it came down to that final climb sprint. Sommerfeld put that put the <laughs> jet booster on and took away from the pack. And you know what, we talk about, again, we've talked so much about cross country, but also that ski jumping yesterday, Canadian, Canada walking away with a gold medal in the junior women's ski jump. Yeah, Alex, awesome Alexandra Ludet taking the gold there for Canada in the ski jumping. There is Jaime Pueyo of Spain. And we've got Manic Silva of Brazil. Anze Gross of Slovenia. Slovenia, of course, hosting the World Senior Championships for Nordic uh, in about a month and holding, uh, hosting the next World Junior Championships and U23 Championships next year. And uh, yeah, I'm really interested on this relay and the selection of the Norwegian team because Yelmaset, uh, who got a silver today, will he be part of that team? And will, they, uh, will he be able to overtake his dad who took a silver medal in the relay in, uh, in the Vancouver Olympics? That'll be an interesting story for tomorrow as we see Anze Gross from Slovenia come in and the Australian, Fidel De Campo, coming in. So Australia, they hold their, their uh, qualification races or their trials races in September for the, uh, for the World Juniors in U23. So Luke, I know we talked, you know, during the women's race a little bit at how how you got to ski this as an individual ski to your strengths where are some crux moves out there on that course yeah definitely i mean you know the 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 nature of some of these kind of olympic championship level courses is just some, the duration that you spend climbing on some of them you know and that is uh you know pretty critical when you're looking at kind of the physiologies that are coming into play because some of these climbs will be more than 90 seconds long and you know, if you're uh, uh, a little more of an anaerobic physiology who's just capable of producing so much lactate, um, then, you know, that's long enough for you to kind of go over the red line, and it's sometimes pretty hard to return from there. So in, you know, some of these courses that sometimes we see on the World Cup and in other circuits where they're a little more mellow, a little more rolling, and you don't spend quite so much time in that grind mode, then, you know, someone uh, who's not quite as, like, aerobically capacity gifted can really get away with it and really use their power to you know, ski really well and, and, and dynamically, but on courses like this, it's so hard to fake it, you know? So if you know that, uh, that that's something you need to worry about, then the speed that you're gonna start at is gonna be a much lower percentage of your top speed than a more distance-oriented skier who just doesn't have that top speed. All right, that's all interesting, Luke. You know, you are talking with John Alberg earlier about designing this course for this individual. He wanted to see, you know, a really tough course out there to really separate those true endurance athletes out there and make people work hard for it. Yeah, he tries to, tries to make the hardest course for this race. It's a pure endurance effort is how he views the individual start races. Adam Burnett of Australia comes in to the finish, or 62nd out of 64 starters. And John Arbor, I think, has done what? All the Olympic courses through here, through here in China, and I think he's maybe doing the next one as well. That's very possible. He did Soldier Hollow. That yep. was his yep. first really, really big event, a big uh, champion Olympic venue, and that was a phenomenal venue. And, yep. and you ski there a fair bit. You have a lot yep. of races there yep. in Soldier, Soldier Hollow. No, definitely. I. <laughs> When I was in China racing that relay, I definitely had some choice words for uh, John Oberg and his course selection <laughs> at that time. And I'm sure these guys are feeling the exact same way right now. Yeah, he likes to uh, set the courses up for both uh, pain and excitement. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of excitement this <laughs> yeah, year. We, we've you know, seen both out here, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, as, as those skiers are lying at the finish line. Yeah, as we look, look out here at Whistler Olympic Park here in uh, the Callahan Valley, um, Luke, I just want to get your general thoughts on the event, the broadcast, and all the volunteers and all the work here. You know, you've seen a lot of events. Just what are your thoughts and, uh, about this event and, and just, uh, just how things have gone here? Yeah, I mean, world class, really. You know, uh, it's, it's amazing. Everything's been so seamless and, um, y you know, completely comparable to World Cup, World Championship level events. And, and I, you know, I would hope that someday we'd get to see some World Cups and, you know, World Championship level events return here because... Uh, you know, I think uh, Europe is awesome, but it's, it is an international sport and it'd be great to have it actually be a little more international and 
Yeah, you know, that's always a bit of uh, an ordeal uh, funding wise and everything, but they, you know, they have the volunteers out here and there's so many people just spending all day, day in and day out, sitting in the tent, sitting in the cold, taking chips and taking bibs. And um, yeah, it's something you really take for granted as an athlete a lot of the time because it's just always there at every venue you go to. But seriously, this just doesn't happen without that. So yeah, hats off to all of them for sure. Oh, thanks. Those are some great words here from Luke Jagger at the uh, World U23 and Junior Nordic Ski Championships. And oh, Steve, there's the clouds starting to roll in. Is that snow coming? You know, how is that going to play out for tomorrow's relay? We've been anticipating snow all day today. We've changed up the start orders. How is that going to play out tomorrow? Yeah, the snow is coming in. And, you know, we, we heard on the radio on the drive up that people are also talking about skiing up at Whistler, the powder that they're going to have tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, the storm is starting to roll in a little later than initially expected. But we are going to get some interesting weather tomorrow for the junior men and junior women mixed relay. And then the U23 men and women mixed relay. As we see, Martin Flores of the Chilean team just come through the picture there. Yeah, I am super stoked for those relays coming up tomorrow. Definitely could be some close finishes once again. We had our a relay for the Nordic combined that two days ago that came down to the final climb, just three sec seconds separating the three top teams. And Steve, talking to John Alberg too about course design and setting it up, you know, he's really set up that relay to be action packed. It's two laps on a two and a half K. You know, he took out some of the bigger climbs. It's gonna prevent some teams from breaking away early and uh, maybe those fields are gonna stay together all the way to that final lap. So just talking about our top finishers, our top three, top four finishers here today for the U23 men. So Merck, who was the 10th starter, you know, he wasn't getting a lot of splits. I mean, he, he does get some splits from the other skiers, so he's getting a sense of whether he's gaining or not and where he stands. But, you know, against the top, top skiers, you know, he's kind of skiing blind somewhat. And so just trying to handle that. Um, and I don't know, Luke, just if you have any comments on that, just when you're an early starter and you're on a really good race, how you're trying to process that because you're, you know, yeah, it's not like you can sit at a computer and, and crunch some numbers. I mean, you're racing at your absolute maximum. How are you trying to process that and, and handle when you're an early starter on a really good race? Yeah, well, first of all, I think you probably could have started Martin Kirkeberg Mork any position today and he would have probably won just because he was so dominant but sometimes it can be almost a little bit of a blessing you know to be to be uh, kind of away and in front of all the madness of, of the high seated skiers behind you because um, you get to really the freedom to do your own race and I think he showed that today yeah so there's your podium there is Mork a massive race and here is Martin Flores of Chile, first ever World U23 Championships. And, uh, you know, the atmosphere, or the, the Chilean, uh, the wax area, I was chatting with them, and they just, their smiles were so massive. They were so happy to be here. They've been training in this province for a month. You know, their, their ski season is July and August. All of them come from the same club, about 60 kilometers outside of Santiago, Chile, as Mar Martin Flores comes into the finish. Our, our last starter, and he's coming in now. 10K individual start. Chilean skier Martin Flores. So Martin, our winner, and Mar Martin his way to the finish line. Mart Martin, our winner, and our Martin just coming across the line as well, as you can see. And here we go. Okay, so that concludes the individual start race. It was Mork on top, Yelmaset in second, and Vika in third. And we'll go through the standings a little more because it was so, so close. When we look at those times, Tim, that battle for third was so close. I mean, it, a it corner was all here, over the a place there, there for a third place. There was about five skiers battling it out on that second lap for that third spot. And here we go. You can see Mork in first, Yelma said in second, and then look how close it is, Tim, for third through 10th. Yeah, at one point, 7.8K, it could have been anyone's game between Vika, Rousset, and Barb, you know, and they're getting those splits and they're fighting hard all the way around the course. Yeah, the third through eighth were within about six seconds there. 
Joe Davies, a solid result. He's going to be super happy Again, with 13th. Moving up from his 15th in the mass third into 13th, he's going to be happy with that result. Two Canadians, 23rd, 24th, Remy Gerlay and Mad Max Holman. Great then, results from them. And we've got Gabe Gledhill. Grew up on Vancouver Island, skied with the Strath Strathcona Nordics, now with Great Britain in 34th. And Sasha Maison from, the, from Yukon. And Erickson Moore, 41st, skiing with the National Team Development Center out of Thunder Bay. But it, an interesting story. So Moore, uh, clearly a dominating performance here, taking a U23 World Championship. Yelmaset equaling the medal his dad won at the Olympic Games in 2010, but with a chance, perhaps if he's on the team tomorrow, to maybe take a gold. And what's interesting, we were talking to John Olberg about those 2010 World Championships relay. And he said, you know, if you, if you watch that race, Yelmaset was kind of battling for first, but his skis iced up. And it became a saying in, in Norway that everyone knew that, you know, if you were late to a meeting, oh, oh, my skis iced up. That was kind of the <laughs> message uh, and this, the, the uh, idiom from, uh, from those championships. And we talked to the coach for Norway, and he was very adamant that Yelmaset wants to overtake his dad in his ski career. And see, very interesting, that relay from 2010 saw the snow coming down. They were skiing in the snow, and we might see very similar conditions tomorrow. Um, with the snow in the forecast. Yeah, so that snow could uh, could change things up. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be interesting, you know, to how the teams select their select their uh, their teams for the relay, but Mork definitely a dominating performance here today. We'll see if he makes on the team. And thank you to Luke Jagger for for being here in the booth with us today. Thanks for having me. It was a great time. And here is some some uh, images from today's race. That was Jonas Vika, then Yelmaset collapsing at the line with a silver medal performance. The crowd going wild as Merck, a dominating performance by the Norwegian driving to the line, a U23 champion. There is Mork atop the world in Whistler.